Hey guys, Anthony Fontana here. I'm a CPA and we're going through a step-by-step -step tutorial for TurboTax for the 2021 tax year in 2022. If any of the sections here don't apply to you, be sure to use like the bookmarks or chapters below to skip forward to whatever section applies to you or whatever you have a question on and maybe you want to see me run through it. All right, let's get to it. All right, you got to first start by logging in here. If you don't have an account, then you have to create one. All right, so we got to go through the fun, uh, I'd say interview questions here with TurboTax. So let's go, let's do it. So it doesn't really matter what you choose here. You can always kind of change this later. Uh, but nonetheless, I'm going to be going through like all situations. So I'm just going to check like all the boxes, but obviously check the ones that pertain to you. So you don't have to kind of deal with the ones like if you didn't have stock sales, don't check the box because then it's going to prompt you later to enter in stock sales and, and why kind of have to go through that process if you don't have that, okay? Let's continue. Here's three things. Um, they're going to guide you on which product to buy. Um, I feel comfortable doing myself. Maybe a tax expert can kind of help a little bit or hire the tax uh, expert to do kind of everything. I'm going to say I do it. I can do it myself. It's going to give you the three products based on your answers, okay? You can pay 120 or 200, so 120 to do it by yourself, 200 um, to have like someone help you along the way or almost $400 for someone to do it for you. All right, so I'm gonna do it the cheapest way here, DIY. All right, let's go. All right, so you gotta uh, enter in some basic information here. Not much I need to say here. Okay, all right, how did you do your taxes last year? Um, you know, if you did TurboTax, obviously they'll be able to find that there pretty easily. Um, or you didn't file, you can always check that too. I'm going to say, I did mine myself last year. How do you feel about me? I feel pretty good about doing my taxes. <laughs> now let's talk a bit about your life. Are you single or are you married? Pretty straightforward. As of the end of the year is what they're asking. Single is what I'm going to check. So I don't have to do anything for the spouse. Did any of these apply? Um, yeah, I'm going to say a college student, owned a home and paid rent. I don't know how that works. So I guess you could sell halfway through the year. Received stimulus and retired. I'm going to just check all the boxes here. Other than, pay you know what, might as well check the paid rent too. Let's get an idea, financial picture. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to check them all here. I want to go through all these. But again, just go through what uh, pertains to you. Okay. I'm going to stay with it. Yeah, we got to hit this one too. Receive child tax credit payments. So you see, you could just always hit this more if you don't. Um, and honestly, I feel like you should hit more just in case, man. Any of these uh, do pertain to you. Like this HSA, I feel like a lot of people miss that when I file tax returns myself. Unemployment, Social Security, retirement, dividends, stocks. Gambling, let's do it. Farm income, never done one of those returns before. You're off to a great start. There we go. They're saying, okay, these are the documents that we need to gather. Okay, we want to make sure we have everything when we're ready to file. All these different tax documents, okay? 1099s, W-2s, look at all of them. Tax breaks, 1098. Since I said that, they're like, hey, you probably have these tax forms. Go get them before we keep going. Money doesn't solve everything, but it helps. This year, this tax year, there are a lot of ways to get more money back. We'll find them for you. Hmm, this year, of course. Uh, this year, I like to also say these are the COVID specials. It's like a, like a 2021 year thing only, um, which is pretty cool, I guess. Uh, it does help out for taxes. So child tax credit. You'll, you'll want to make sure, like if you got the, especially if you got the advanced child tax uh, credit payments, those were payments that were made July through December of 2021, you would have received a letter from the IRS in the beginning of 2021. So, and that tells you how much you received and how many kids you had um, to get those payments. And you'll need to put that on this tax return because normally you get the child tax credit when you file the returns. But last year, COVID special, they increased the child tax credit and they gave half of it to you throughout the year's payments. So you, you have to kind of reconcile that. Now, if you like say you didn't get it and you did get it, it's just gonna delay the process. Not like all of a sudden you're gonna come into money. You're not. The IRS knows what they gave you. So um, yeah, we just wanna get it accurate because if you don't have it accurate, then again, it does delay the process of filing and uh, processing your returns. If you don't have that letter, then you can't always go on the IRS's website. 
Um, you can just search IRS Advance Child Tax Credit, and you could go in here. Let's see, there it is. Um, and if you log in here, you'll be able to find out the exact amount that you were paid and that they have on file. Um, there it is, that letter 6419. That's what they're saying here that we're going to need. Okay. Uh, the stimulus is kind of the same thing. You know, if you didn't get the stimulus and you should have got the stimulus, you'll get it on the tax return. But if you got the stimulus and you say you didn't get the stimulus, there's going to be delay in the refund process. So make sure that, you know, you put that accurate. If you don't know how much you got, this login information right here, when you log into the IRS's website, it'll tell you how much you got. Okay. So you can use that too. Uh, child dependent care. Yeah. They like up this big time for 2021. So make sure we do have the daycare information or the school's information of what you paid for, uh, for daycare, the name, the address, and the tax ID of the daycare facility. All right. Continue. Let's start with your personal info, personal information. Here we go. Um, so you will need to put your name as it appears on your social security card and obviously social security number that is associated to you or assigned to you. Um, let's see here. Well, social security number. All right. Let's see here. Occupation. You're just going to put, you know, what your occupation is. Are you a member of the armed force? No, I'm not. Let's see here. Tell us the states you lived. I lived in another state. No, I'm going to say this is only a one state return, not a part year return or non-resident return. Okay. Um, but if it was, it pertains to you. You check that yes box. Um, what happens if I check? Oh, it's going to say, what's the other state you lived in and when did you move? Okay. Someone else can claim me as a dependent? No, I'm claiming myself. Are you legally blind? No. Preparing this return for a taxpayer who has passed away? Unfortunately, uh, well, fortunately, no. That's would be, that would be a bummer, but that does happen. I want to change the language. No, I'm going to use English as well. All right, I'm going to enter my social. Let's confirm your marital status, right? As of December 31st, 2021, you were single, right? Or any of the below, okay? Let's look at who qualifies as your dependent. Deal. So my child, I'm gonna say I got one child here. Name is Baby Fontana. All right, and they were born 2020, there we go. COVID baby. US citizen, yes, my baby is my daughter. Baby was Disabled, passed away, none of the above. Adopted for 2021. Gotcha. Select none of the above. Okay, so if you click that adopted, there's a credit that you can get there. Uh, but nope, not adopted. Let's say nine times out of ten. They're not. Did baby live with you for the whole year? Yes, baby did. Was all that time in the U.S.? Yep. Did the baby pay for more? No. I paid. Okay, continue. Let's get more information about baby. Do you have written or verbal consent with both parent of other parent who can claim? Yes, I do. Is the baby of this parent claiming baby per your legal uh, agreement? No. Okay. So this is who gets to claim the kid is all based on court documents, legal, right? Legal agreement there. All right. So if you are the custodial parent, is the, the word here from the, you know, the court documents, but you don't want to claim the baby because I don't know, you made a deal with your significant other and they get to claim them this year. You should fill out that form 8332 to give that to the non-custodial parent. That's what this is here. Okay. That doesn't pertain to me. Let's check if any relatives will claim baby this year. No, we're going to say no. Uh, no one else paid for more than half. I did all of the child care and rent and all that stuff. This helps with qualify. Okay, good deal. So now I get to put in babies. Okay, there's baby. All right, you got to put in your current mailing address. Okay, this is again, current mailing address. This is not the, the address of where you were at last year. This is your current mailing address. So I get this confusion a lot. Uh, you know, if people move from one year to the next and like, wait, that's not where I lived last year. That's not where we're putting on the tax return. We're putting our current address because we want the IRS to mail us anything that they need to mail us to our current address. Um, you're like, well, I don't want mail from the IRS. Not a good, not a good option there um, because let's say they were to issue you a refund check. You'd want that mail, okay? Now, maybe mail you don't want to see is like a taxes owed or 
like let's say worse even is like a lien that they're going to place on your assets, right? But we do want that mail because maybe we can respond to it before they actually take action. So very important that you put your current mailing address here. All right, enough on that. All right, so now we're at the meat and potatoes of a tax return, income and expenses, right? It's income tax return. Okay, so anyways, we're going to start with the basics, the W-2, okay? I kind of just made this one up, um, so let's get it done. Work on my W-2. Okay, we can go ahead, enter in the EIN. You'll see that here on a W-2. It's right here. That's the EIN, so... Grab that, put it in there, hit continue, and then you can upload, makes it easier, right? You can type it in yourself or you can upload it from my computer. Well, since I've made this BS1 up, it doesn't recognize it. So I have to type it in myself. So if you do upload it yourself, regardless, you will want to double check that everything gets entered correctly, right? This, they do do a lot on TurboTax, but they don't do everything, okay? You got to double check their work, all right? Anyways, I'm going to go ahead and enter this in. So if you're going to do the same thing I'm doing here, you can go ahead and follow along. If not, you can kind of skip ahead here because um, this will be some boring data entry here. Okay. All right. Company name, the address. I'm going to make this basic here. Newport Beach, Newport Beach. Sure. Why not? All right. Wages from here. 40. I'm just reading directly from the W-2 here, okay? Maybe we can do something like this. There we go. All right, now we can get both on the same screen, okay? 45,000 with Social Security, 2790. I get that question a lot. Why are those two boxes different? Well, generally speaking, that's like your salary that you got, and this is what's taxable. And in this case, because I put 4,000, well, that's a little off, huh? It should be five. Um, 5,000 here. I know that's a typo. Um, that code D is like a 401k. You'll see that in a second. 401ks are non-taxable, so they take that out direct on your W-2. But nonetheless, of course, there's errors here because I just made this for this. Um, video here. Okay. So security tips, no social security tips on here. Dependent care benefits. If you have that, make sure that you get that in there. Do not miss that. That is um, important. If you miss that, uh, you'll get a fun letter in the mail from the IRS. Of course, I've seen those before. Okay. Uh, but then we have that 401k, right? The 4,000. We're going to say, okay, there's that. Add another item because we got it. This is real common also. The health insurance, right? Okay. We do have a retirement plan. Okay, four, yes we do. We have CA, SDI, it's really common. Uh, state disability insurance, uh, we all pay here in California. Okay, we're also paying California taxes. Just enter in you know, the number there. I'm just making up a bogus number, 40,000. Okay, and 1,200 is what I paid in state income taxes. No local taxes, we hit continue. Okay, that looks good, looks good. It's telling me, is this correct? Because they're off, they're not 100% accurate. All right, there we go, refund so far. Thanks for letting me know, TurboTax. Deal, let's see, uh, check for uncommon situation. Okay, so if this is, you know, any of these pertain to you, you gotta check the box here and fill these out. All right, but I'm gonna say none of them apply. All right, there it is, there's my W-2. And we're good to go. That's the w, W2s are easy. Should be pretty straightforward there, all right? All right, on to the next section here, the self-employment uh, income and expenses, okay? Uh, I guess I just wanna kinda go over some things before we get going on TurboTax. Uh, self-employment income, that's like if you got like a 1099 NEC, non-employee um, compensation, or 1099K for like third-party payments uh, that came through. If you got either of these, that, well, not always on the 1099K, but definitely on the 1099NEC, the IRS views you as a business, okay? Um, you might think, well, no, I'm not a business. Yes, you are in the IRS's eyes, okay? And as a business, we want to write off business expenses. So the IRS says we can write off anything that is ordinary and necessary for you to generate income. Now, the reason they, they make it vague like this is because there's obviously a whole bunch of different types of businesses out there. 
Me as an accountant, I can only write off certain things than let's say a video game streamer can write off, right? They can, they stream on Twitch. They make a whole bunch of money doing that stuff. They, they buy video game consoles, video games, in-game purchases, uh, controllers. All those are write-offs for that streamer because they need that equipment in order to generate their income. Now, me as an accountant, can I write off an Xbox? No, because I don't need an Xbox to do my work, okay? Um, so that's why they do keep it vague here. So you got to kind of keep your mind open. Make sure that you write off everything that you needed in order to, to run your business, okay? And I would highly suggest that you get a what we call a P&L together or a profit or loss. That's what us accountants say. It's your income and expenses all kind of uh, put together on one piece of paper, categorized, Okay before you begin your taxes. So you kind of know where you stand. Um, you go through all your, you know, your bank statements, your receipts, and uh, compile those together in a, a P&L, a profit or loss statement. Now, I do have one of those on my website. You can download like a template version of this that you can then use, you know, to file your taxes with or just to kind of keep yourself organized. Uh, link in the description for that. All right, let's get started. All right, did you have any self-employment income and expenses? We know we did. That's why we're here. Um, Uber, I'm going to say I was an Uber driver, okay? We'll say, yes, we did. Uber, Uber driver. Let's see what happens. This helps us personalize. Yes, I was in ride sharing. That's what they call it, ride sharing. It's a side gig, we'll say. It doesn't really matter. They're just kind of like going through these questions to see what they're going to give you in the future. Regardless, you can always change this stuff later. Tell us about how long you've worked there. I'll say I'll started in uh, the beginning of 21. Did you make these payments for your ride sharing driving work? Let's see here. Oh, did we pay a contractor? No, generally speaking, Uber drivers don't pay anyone. Tell us if any of these less common situations apply. I, I didn't actively participate. I am maybe you have like a self-driving car. That'd be cool. Um, I'm subject to, to department. No, none of them apply. Okay, continue. All right, there we go. There's our, and look at, they gave us this. This is actually really important here. Um, you want to make sure this does not give you that, what is it, the, the 999 code. There's like a, yeah, there we go. That one right there. Uh, if it gives you that 999 code, make sure you change this, okay? Because that's kind of like a flag with the IRS. I mean, it's not generally like, uh, it just doesn't look good. Um, a 999 is, is like kind of like a lazy return, essentially. It doesn't look good with the IRS. So make sure that you do actually get a code here. You can always like Google this. This is what they call an N-A-I-C-S code. Um, and you can just Google that and it'll probably pop up ride sharing this one here. Um, but anyways, make sure you do get a code here. Okay, um, there you go. So if you have an EIN, obviously you're going to put your, you know, your tax ID for the business right there too. Um, and if you have a name for the business, you know, you'll make sure you put it there. Obviously, also your business address, okay? We need to confirm is what they're saying here, right? I didn't pay any employees. Uber drivers generally don't pay anyone. They're only working for themselves, okay? Cash method of accounting is definitely most common. It's very, very, very rare that you use accrual. Um, won't get into that. All right, looks good. I'm going to continue here. What companies? I'll say Uber. There we go. Continue. Um, well, I don't actually have an Uber account, so I'm going to skip this. Um, let's enter your income from there. So I got a 1099 NEC and one of those 1099 Ks for their other incentives. Well, it doesn't give me the option, but okay. Let's say I got both. Continue. All right, let's take a look at this 1099 here from Uber. All right, we got paid a little bit of money here from this uh, NEC non-employee compensation. Okay, so we're just gonna enter in the information here. Who paid you? We'll say Uber. It says on their Uber Technologies. Technologies. How is your payer's federal ID formatted? We'll say it's like this. It's an EIN, and that would be right here. Oh, look at that. Of course, it got all mixed up, but it would be right here is where that is. Okay, and I'm just gonna make this up because I don't have it. 
It's nine. Okay. Um, non employee compensation box one right here. That's where we're going to put there. Okay. So this is 984.84. There's no taxes withheld, uh, and neither of those boxes are checked. Continue. Did you have any more self-employment income? Yes, I did, because Uber also gave me one of these guys here. 1099K. Okay, so which has some other income on there. So we'll say that one, other self-employment income. 1099K. Amount on there, we'll see here. And on this one, you're using box 1A is the gross amount, okay? Um, all these other boxes here is just like a per month is what they're doing, okay? So you'll see box 1A is a combination of these two numbers here, okay? So we just worked two months and we made 3,400 bucks, 3,423.6. Continue. All right, did you have any more? And we'll say, no, that's it. That's all I got, the 1099K and 1099 NEC. Those are very common with Uber drivers. Next up, claiming your expenses, okay? We know we can claim anything that's ordinary and necessary to generate income, um, and Uber definitely has uh, some common expenses uh, for driving your car, ride sharing, all right? Kind of went through that quickly. Let's see, what did they say here? No. Let's find all the expenses, ride share driving. Okay, we'll review, download a list. So they have like a list of common expenses here. Okay, recommended for you, but this is kind of like all of them. And this is like what the PL essentially is, is this all on like a spreadsheet. And I can show you an example of my PL template here. Here it is, okay. But you wanna put like gross sales, total um, sales came in or total money that came in from your business and then all the expenses here, right? All this for sure. And then if you have a home office, you fill this out. If you have, um, an auto expense, you fill this out. And then this will help, you know, get your net profit here. Okay. That's essentially a P and L or this here, but in an Excel spreadsheet, get started. Okay. So we'll, we'll do one of these. Uh, let's see. Oh, first select the expenses, you know, you had. So if we filled out a P and L, we'll know what we have here. Okay. Startup costs, vehicle. Well, we know it vehicle expense. Will we rent a car? No, we have our phone. We use our phone for business. Maybe I got some stuff for the car, like waters and things like that. Other miscellaneous examples, of course. We definitely had the Uber service fees. Okay, yeah, you'll definitely wanna get a copy of that too. Let's see here, this thing here. So um, Uber will have this on your account. They, what do they call this? Um, tax summary? Yeah, tax summary is what this is. Okay, um, and on here it's gonna have you know, how many miles you drove online. So that's like when a client was actually in the car, how many trips, okay. Um, and then like your gross earnings. And you'll see these line up with the 1099s that we got, right? This one, the 3,400, that is the 1099K. And the 984 is the NEC, right? Here we go. Well, 984 right there. And that lines up here. So that 4,000 is what's going to go on our tax return as gross. Uh, but then you paid some fees to Uber. So that $1,000 is essentially what this is. Okay, so we definitely want to make sure we account for that. Um, we don't pay tax on that money because we didn't actually get it. All right, less common. This is a good option to click here. They're less common. Regardless, again, what business you're in, they're going to have their recommended ones. But then, you know, you definitely want to see all of, look at that. They have pages of this here. So you want to make sure that you, you do go through this to make sure any of these, you know, if they apply to you, you check the box so you can write off that expense. Okay. Uh, I'm going to keep this kind of short here. Uh, so I'm just going to go with the recommended ones. Uh, but if any of these do apply, like assets, okay, for sure, you know, you definitely going to want to put your assets in there um, and we depreciate those. Okay. Let's see. I'm just going to kind of quickly go through this here. Commissions, contract labor. If you hired anyone and paid them over 600 bucks at the beginning, we did kind of go through this, but if you paid them over $600, 
for the year, um, you should be sending out a 1099, okay, to that individual. Now, you would need to collect what we call a W-9 from them. That's one of these here, right here. This is this right here, okay? And if essentially, if they're checking this box, they have their name, they put their social on here, you paid them over 600 bucks total for the year, 1099 needs to be sent out, and the actual due date for that is January 31st, okay, of the following year. So if you paid them over 600 in 2021, we're a little late now, but it was January 31st of 2022 and uh, so on. So if you pay for 2022 over $600, the due date is January 31st, 2023. So make sure at least you don't miss it moving forward. All right, let's see. That's contract labor there. Interest on anything. Okay, health insurance premiums. You know what? I'm going to check this box here too. Now nah, on this return, we have a W-2, so we probably wouldn't want both. Um, but anyways, if you are paying for health insurance and... This is your main gig, you know, your business is your main gig. You wanna make sure you deduct that, check that box. You work from home, check the box, okay? Let's see, I'm gonna do that home office just to go through that. Um, meals, I'm gonna say some meals also, long-term legal professional. Maybe we pay tax prep fees, maybe. Mortgage insurance, office expense, repairs, maintenance, taxes, licenses, utilities. Okay, we're going to say that's it. All right, check for expenses that people often miss. Come on, computer. Do you have any startup costs? Okay, so like if you paid for anything before you actually started your business that you use in your business or used for the business, obviously you check the box. You want to write it off. I'm gonna in this case, I'm gonna say no. Did you rent a vehicle? No, I use my own car. Okay, keep going. Let's see here. All right, so let's start with the vehicle. This is like the big one for Uber drivers. Okay, um, and if you see again on my spreadsheet here that I have uh, for like a p and I have that auto expense, and this is kind of like the main, those two right there are the main uh, figures that we'll need, okay, business miles driven and then total miles driven. That gives us a percentage, okay, um, or we take the standard mileage. We'll go over that. I know it'll go over in a second. Did you use your car? Yes, we used our car, and we're ride sharing. Um, I had a Honda. It doesn't really matter what you put here, but you know, you definitely want to try and make it as specific as possible. Select the type of vehicle. This is a car under 6,000 pounds. Uh, when did you start using the vehicle? Beginning of the year. Continue. Tell us about the owner of this Honda. I own the car. Okay, that's most common. Was this Honda available for personal use? Yeah, this is my only car. Did you? So I did use it for grocery store runs and the gym and visiting my mom, stuff like that. So we would put, you know, it is personal. Did you have another vehicle? No, this is my only car that I have. Did you keep track of miles you drove for your ride sharing, uh, driving work in this Honda? Yeah, I tracked the, the mileage. So this right here, you'll see, right? That's why this thing is important. This did track your miles. But keep in mind, this only checks miles while someone is actually in the car. If you, let's say, take someone from one place to another, and then you're sitting there and you're trying to look for another person to, to pick up here, uh, but that other, and then you find someone and that other person is, let's say, five miles away. So you have to drive from there five miles to pick that other person up. That five miles is not getting accounted for here. Okay, so you have to make sure that you do account for those miles where you don't actually have someone in the car, but you are going to pick someone else up, okay? So this is not all the miles. This is definitely not all the miles we can claim, but for sure, we should be able to claim this, okay? So we're gonna say, yes, we did track those. You know, what happens if we say no? Okay, so yeah, it doesn't matter, I guess, right? What if I put yes? Same screen, great, good job. Um, not so sure why they did that. Um, I'll enter the total miles I drove in 21, yup, or beginning and ending. Okay, so you can do either or. This is set up, this PL set up for the first option here, right? Um, the business, 
there's total miles, we'll say 12,154. And for, sorry, that was total miles. And this is the business miles here, 11, 10. And I'm going to say maybe double that because we had to drive a whole bunch more between clients to pick people up times two. There we go. Easy enough. Two, 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 zero. There we go. Whoops. What happened there? Okay. Here we go. We're four or more vehicles used for, for the, uh, for work. No, this is it. I only had one car. Now let's select your vehicle deduction. Okay. So there's the standard miles. It's, it's essentially that, uh, it's 56 cents a mile for 20, 21, 2220 times 0.56. That's what it should be, right? There we it is. Yep. Um, or you can do the actual expenses. And let's say, let's see here. It kind of depends, but I'd say it's more common that we get um, a bigger deduction using the standard mileage than we do going through the actual expenses. Uh, if you have a more expensive car, then yeah, maybe the actual expenses will make sense. Um, but I'd say, most of the time, it makes more sense to do the standard mileage. The actual miles, you know, you have to go through all your gas receipts, not just gas for business. It's all because then they use a percentage, and the percentage is based on the total mile or the business miles over the total miles. Okay. And then we multiply that by, you know, all the vehicle expenses there. So I'm going to keep it easy, uh, a little more conservative here. Use a standard mileage deduction. Okay. You can also do like parking. Maybe I had to park. I spent 45 bucks parking, tolls. Um, maybe I didn't take any tolls, transportation for work, property taxes, including your vehicle registration. Okay, we could write some of that off. Let's say there's $20 in there, interest paid on the car. Didn't pay any interest. Maybe we own the car. All right, there's our, our vehicle deduction. And that went up because of the parking and that um, property taxes in the vehicle registration. Do you want to claim another vehicle? No, that's it. I, I think I told it at the beginning. I only had one car. I don't know why it keeps asking. All right. Home office. Maybe I worked from home to do some admin work for the business regularly and exclusively. That is the, um, the threshold from the IRS. Okay. Regularly and exclusively. If you only use it like sporadically, then, you know, we shouldn't be claiming the home office. It's got to be a regular on a regular occasion here. So I'd say, yeah, I used it. There it is, right? Regularly and ex exclusively and regularly. Your principal place of business. Okay. So you can qualify for a home office as an Uber driver here. Um, yes, I had more than one. No, I only lived at one place all year. Did any of these situations apply at your home office? Shared my home office with a no, none of these is I'm live by myself. Let's give the home office where you do your ride sharing drive. Okay, let's just say it's called home office. Doesn't really matter. Was this home office used for work only? Nothing else? We'll say yes. Did you regularly use this? Right? It's gonna tell you here. Must be on a continuing basis. There you go. Was the home home office the primary place where you work? Yeah, that's it. So I work there and then I get in my car and we go off. All right, we can do that. Let's see. Yep, okay. If we say no, did you meet with patients, clients? No, we didn't. Is this home office a separate? No, continue. It's gonna say you don't qualify. It's because we have to put this as your primary place where you work. Based on this image, you qualify for the home office deduction. There we go. I started using it at the beginning of the year. Continue. How many months did you use the home office? At least 15 days. We'll say all year. Now I know this here is saying that I only worked, you know, two months essentially. Okay. Uh, but I am doing this as if I worked all year as an Uber driver. Okay. 100% was done at the home office. Help me figure this out. Yeah, all the business is at the home office here. Um, I do all the admin work. I track all my uh, mileage here and my expenses at the home office on a regular basis. Every week I'm doing this. What was the size of the home office? Okay, so you have to, you know, obviously do some uh, some measuring here. But home office, let's say, is 150 square feet. 
um, and my house is 1200 okay it's going to give us a percentage 150 divided by 1200 right 12 percent 12 and a half percent is what they're going to give me this on the other hand simplified home office deduction is generally the worst of the two options i would recommend that you actually go through the actual expenses here okay um we'll go through the guided okay and if again if you're using my spreadsheet here this is also this is geared towards renters okay if you're if you own your home you can you uh, let's see here would add a line in here for like how much the value of your home is and then we would depreciate some of that with the home office here too let's say we rent Square footage, we know we just did that, 12.5%. Okay. Um, expenses for my home office. Oh, so if you have, all right, yeah, def definitely this is not common. Um, if you have expenses that only apply to the home office, like let's say you just painted that area of the house or whatever it is, something like that, okay. It's not usually common, okay, that, that we have those. Um, entire, so. This is a misconception here. A lot of people tell me like, you know, I pay $1,200 a month in rent, okay? So they would put like $1,200 here. It's not monthly. It's on an annual basis because this is for the all year. This is a tax return for all of 2021. So we're going to do 12 months. We use this home office every month, right? So that's what we paid in rent, okay? Same thing with utilities, right? We're going to put an annual uh, utilities here. So we're going to do all utilities. Look at that. We, we can allow for all utilities. Um, and let's say I paid about $250 a month for all of my utilities times 12 months, $3,000. And utilities that were separate just for the home office, okay? Um, rare. This is rare that we have this. I'm going to not put that in. Okay, home office, let's see here. So if you did any repairs to the, to the house, right, we can also get a portion of that as a deduction. I'm gonna say this year I didn't do any. Uh, renter's insurance, yeah, I paid like 120 bucks for renter's insurance for the year. Uh, home office, let's see here. A HOA, security, you can write those off here. I'm gonna say I didn't have those. In casualty losses, you were robbed. Um, that's, I'm laughing, but I'm sorry that if that happened to you, that it would be horrible. Um, I'm going to say no, none of this happened to us. No. Okay. Here we go. Those are expenses. So we're going to add all that up times by 12 and a half. Okay. Maybe not <laughs> depreciation for your home office computer, right? So let's say I definitely have a computer. Wait, what just happened there? Okay, I don't know why they're making me do the whole rigmarole again here. I did hit back. I know that. No, I don't have casualty losses. Okay, so here we go. We add all this together. It's going to be 12 and a half. But then they ask, since you uh, doesn't home office depreciation does not apply to you. We know that because I don't own the home. Okay, deal. So there you go. That's way higher than that simplified amount. So it's 12.5% times, you know, the 14,000 for rent, the 3,000 for utilities and the hundred dollars for, uh, the insurance. Okay. That's what that is. Whereas if you remember this simplified version was like $700. So a lot more, I always recommend that you actually go through the actual home office expenses. Okay. Communications you would want to put like, um, let's see here. We'll put our phone here that we paid like a hundred dollars a month for, for 12 months. Okay. I'm not going to go through all this other stuff, but you can definitely write that off. Okay. Let's see here. Supplies. Maybe I bought some, you know, water bottles for the car, air fresheners for the car, things like that. Maybe phone chargers too for the car. Um, I would just lump those all in into one line here. There's no, no need to kind of like go line by line here. Um, and that's what I, that's why I would use a P and L here. I'd go through, you know, supplies and I'm just going to tell that I might make, you know, a separate spreadsheet here, supplies. Um, and then say like my phone bill, you know, um, and anything else that I have here. Um, all right. So there we go. Let's see here. Supplies. I'm going to say, I don't know, $400. We'll say for 42. Okay. 
Round numbers, typically, they look and smell a little fishy to the IRS because generally speaking, when you go buy things, they're not like, you know, $100 even. There's always tax um, and you're never paying, yeah, a round number like that. So when you put that on the tax return, keep that in mind. Meals, legal professional, other miscellaneous, we know definitely I'll put this one in. This has to do with the, voila. Thousand ninety six. We'll get that on the return. Thousand ninety six. Oops. This is Uber fees. Oh, nice. Continue. All right. I'm just gonna say that's it. You can always add expenses, right? Like I said before, you might have checked those boxes, but you can always go back and look at more, and then hit this last common one, right? And then kind of go through that. All right, but I'm not going to go through that right now. Um, I think you guys get the gist of all of this. I hope so. If you don't, please leave questions um, in the comments section, and I'll try and get to those to help you out here. Okay, well, I'm going to say I'm done. Let's see where we're at. Look at that. We have a loss for this business, okay? They're not going to uh, give us a taxable loss because of that home office. The home office will only bring you to a zero, it won't bring you to a negative. All right, so there we go, continue. How much of the render took place in all of this? This is all in the United States, we didn't drive Uber elsewhere. Was any of the ride sharing driving for a former employer? No, this is for myself. Do you have deductions for ride sharing driving that you'll claim elsewhere? Nope, this is all just for the business. All right, run my free check. Here we go. They're going to say audit risk is low. Okay, this is good. For someone who works in right here to home office expenses. Okay, low, but we can definitely do this. Okay, nonetheless. All right, home office with the ride sharing makes sense. We just say this is all for admin is essentially what, what we would do. Do you have another line of work for self-employed? Nope, that's it. All right, hopefully we're done. Hopefully. Yay, okay, nothing for self-employment, nothing more. Well, I hope the video was helpful. No, I'm not gonna do that. All right, on to the next section. Got unemployment, here we go. Did you receive unemployment? Yes, I did, that's why I'm here. Okay, where did you get your benefits from? The government, generally speaking, when you have that 1099G. Were you required to repay? Uh, very uncommon. We're going to say no. We were not required to repay. We got everything. Up. How do you want to enter? Let's give this a shot, huh? Try and upload this thing. See what happens. Okay, I'm going to go here. Drag and drop. Voila. Come on. TurboTax, help me out. All right. Here we are. Oh, look at that. Wow, it works. Awesome. Okay. We want to double check with our 1099G with everything that's correct here. Okay. Make sure they do this proper. Nine, four. Okay. So we're looking pairs right there. That's where it would be. This is a California one. Um, okay. But these, I guess, can look a little bit different, but generally they're the same here. So we want to make sure that this number matches that right there, you know, and then the name here with the address. Right, and that's fine right there. The P.O. box, right there we go. That looks fine, we're gonna say continue. Let's make sure they got this correct. Okay, we're going to zoom out a little. Okay, that's right, 8250, right, 8250. Um, and federal income tax withheld, box four, they got zero. Incorrect, look at that, 495. So obviously this upload thing can have errors. So you want to make sure that you do check that because that's that's important, right? You paid almost 500 bucks. Well, in this case, we paid 500 bucks in taxes already. Don't want to pay that again, okay? Um, let's see, there's nothing else, at least on this one, but you'll see on this one here, right? We got unemployment and PFL paid family leave too. So it's only accounting for this. We do also need to account for that. So we want to make sure that we're going to add that in here in a bit. But as far as state, there's nothing with the state. State of California, thank God, does not tax this. So there's nothing with the state here. So that's that. Has some info that doesn't go there, right? There's that 824. 
that we saw down here, okay? RTAA payments. No, that's not right. It was not in box five. If you see here, it's actually in a separate 1099G on box one. So they did this incorrect, but that's okay. We're going to hit continue. Thanks. There's my refund. Good job. Okay. And then I'm going to do another 1099G because it didn't uh, recognize that one from before. I'm going to do the upload again feature, but I'm just going to change the amount. So I don't have to... In, uh, so I have to input all the uh, the name, EDD, the taxpayer social, or sorry, the EIN of California, right? So payers federal ID number, there we go. EDD, that's all correct. We know that it's the same. This obviously changed because 824 and zero taxes held on this. So we'll see, 824, all right, continue. And we know this is wrong, but that's okay. Continue, all right, there we go. That's it, that unemployment, super easy to do. All right, on to the next one here. Okay, so what did I do? I kinda, I guess I've never seen this before, but I clicked start and then I said no to this thing and then it ended up down here. So I have to now revisit, but we're gonna look at the 1099 uh, for interest, dividends and stock sales. So we're gonna hit revisit. What I did here is I clicked it and then I said no thanks to this. But uh, yeah, so if you hit no thanks, what will happen is you'll come back here and then it doesn't, you don't see here, you have to kind of scroll down to check that out again. Nonetheless, here we go. Um, investment income, okay, is what you gotta check. This is what I got, all right, continue. Okay, so you can actually get it straight from your brokerage account, but I'm not gonna do that because for illustration purposes, I don't wanna log in, okay? Enter in a different way. I'm gonna show you how to do it from the actual 1099 itself. Okay, so what do we have? Let's start with one. We'll start with the interest, the easy one, okay? Bring it over from my bait, upload it from my computer. Let's see what happens here, okay? I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna show you first what I'm uploading. Let's take a look. Let's try this one here. We'll do like this one here. This is a 1099 we got for 200 bucks, okay, 2021 from the bank and to Joe Schmo. there we go, okay? Uh, let's upload this one here. That's, shoot, that's this one, right? Another look is the one. All right, here we go. It's thinking, see if they get that two, what was it, 229, right? I think so. 220, 220, sorry, 220. Let's see if they get that info on there. All right, look at that. They got it. That's great. Um, interest from savings. I didn't have any of that. So this is a pretty straightforward 1099 interest that we got from the bank, okay? There's nothing else other than, and you'll see our boxes here, they say. So there's nothing in box, what does it say? Box three, there's zero. There's nothing here, zero, okay? There's nothing at all. The only thing we have is box one, okay? We're just gonna put zeros everywhere. All right, let me make changes. Okay, deal, that's it. Um, we'll say California, zero, 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 zero. California, done. Continue. All right. Do any of these uncommon situations apply? I need to make. I need to adjust the interest reported on the form. No, my state doesn't tax uh, all of this interest. So you know, if you're in one of those states and that pertains to you, click that button. But I'm in California. We tax all income here, of course. Um, well, not all, but there we go. All right. So we got that one done. Let's see if we upload a different one that looks a little. Is, let's see here one like this this is also this is actually more common that we see this type of form come out okay let's see what happens when we upload that that was 30 there it is 38 dollars 3754 um, we're gonna say enter it a different way we're gonna say we have interest and we are gonna upload it okay here we go continue and we're gonna hit the here it is voila all right come on Okay, same thing. Nice, I got it. Thirty-seven fifty-four from the credit union. Nothing else. So we're just gonna enter zeros. Oh, well, that's it. Nice. Continue. None of those apply. Again, continue. All right, here we go. 
add another investment. Okay, now let's see if we take a look at the dividends. Okay, here we go. What's my dividend one I have here? It is, this is like a composite. This is actually really popular with like TD Ameritrade, Morgan Stanley, Charles Schwab, those types of things, brokerage accounts, okay? We get something that looks a lot like this. And on here, you'll have the dividends, okay? Um, they also have like the 1099, what we call B. You'll see that in a second, but these are stock sales down here. Also, right, if we had any like uh, contracts, straddles, um, those will pop up there. Um, and then there's also like an interest income if you got any. Obviously, there's two cents on this one. That would be a zero, essentially. Uh, they round down on the tax return, so we won't need to put that in there. But let's see how it takes this here. It should be able to take this because this is a really common form. Upload it from my computer. Continue. Drag and drop. Let's see what happens here. Come on, TurboTax. Man, taking a bit here, huh? There's a lot of information on this thing, I bet. That's why. Wow, look at that. Okay, so you'll want to make sure you get the basics correct, but you'll see the payers, taxpayer of identification number, get that correct, put the, the name of the brokerage company, right? That's what I'm putting right here. You'll get, okay, look at this, dividends. Did it get it? Wow, okay. Box 1A, 930, 29, okay, 2A, 21, 25, okay, good deal. Look at that. Um, what else? Qualified, 88, 50, 51, okay, good job, nice. Okay, unrecaptured collectibles. Okay, so this, okay, I think it's got all this too. So what's the next one? We have uh, non-dividend distributions. Okay, got that one. Box five, what do we have in box five? Yep, 26 cents, deal. Box seven is the next one. Foreign taxes paid. Deal. Wow, that was good. All right. Uh, states. There's nothing with the states here. So, well, you know what? We could probably just close. That's probably easier to do, huh? There we go. Continue. All right. Portion of these dividends is U.S. government interest, right? You'll know that if you have these, they would say those on that 1099, but none of these apply here. These are uncommon. These are definitely uncommon. You'll know if you have something like this, though, okay? Do not apply. All right, so there's that. So we have interest, dividends, interest. Let's see, what else do we need to do? Let's do some stock sales, okay? We're gonna say enter a different way. 1099B, stock sales, here we go. Continue. Oh, fun stuff. You can read about this, how this works, but I'm not going to. I'm just gonna go straight into it. Okay, which bank or broker sent you this? Okay, you can do this. I'm gonna say brokerage doesn't really matter okay continue tell us about do these sales include any stock options i will come back to this but i'm going to say in this case no okay i'll have a separate video on that one do you because that's a whole different ball of wax these things they have all their own separate very specific rules that is too much for this video do you have more than three sales? I'm gonna say yes. Uh, yes, we have more than that, right? If we take a look here, right? We have, this is like the summary here of all the sales, okay? But if we keep scrolling, right, we'll see all the individual sales themselves. And there's a lot, right? There's a lot of sales. Okay, that's that was it. But each one, that's a sale, that's a sale, right? These are all date disposed, okay? There's that. Do these sales include any other types of investments? Land, collectibles? No, they're all stocks. Did you buy every investment listed? Yes, I did. Then none of these were gifted or inherited. Okay, there's separate video for this. It's like a whole different uh, ball of wax for that thing. Sales section total. So you can either go one by one on the, let's see here, stock sales, or you can do these for the totals, like the summary here. Generally, I like to do the totals, but sometimes it's more beneficial to do the um, one by one, okay? But I'd say nine times out of 10, I'm just gonna do the summary here, um, okay? For entering, okay, we get it. So what they're saying here there is, you see how these are separately listed, right? That's how we're gonna have to put this on TurboTax too, right? And if, right, there's, whoops, no, those ones, here we go, like this one here. 
right? And you'll see on the form 8949, this is how they're going to be reported, right? With this little code here, okay? Um, so we wanna make sure that we do do that properly here as well. Okay, so sales section, right? It'll say here. So let's say for this one, we have a short-term basis is reported to the IRS. So that's what we'll click here. Short-term basis is reported, and that's what we're doing. Proceeds, how much did we sell it for? 41, 49, 62. Okay, and, and cost basis, right? How much did we buy this thing for? 24, 69, 18. 24, 69 point. One eight. There we go. Continue. There it is. Add another one because we have another line here. This one we're going to use. Let's see here in this example. It says long-term basis is not reported to the IRS. Okay. So we'll say long-term basis is not reported to the IRS. How much did we sell it for? 21.13.51. 21.13.51. And cost basis. How much did we buy it for? 18, 19, 66, 18, 19, 66. Okay, there we go. All right. Um, this is a little more uncommon, but you'll see is that, I mean, well, this is kind of immaterial, $42. If this was a very big amount, I would be concerned, but in this case, I'm not too concerned. So we're essentially just gonna report the $42 as gain. But what happened here, undetermined, you'll see, Right, basis is not reported. So I believe, generally speaking, what happens is you, like you buy this stock like a long time ago and then maybe brokerage accounts get, uh, like banks get bought out by bigger ones. So it goes from like, you know, one bank to another bank. Um, and during that transition, the basis or like the cost that, or the, you know, the amount that you bought the stock for doesn't get reported or transferred over to the new bank. And that's what's happening here. So that's why they just don't even have record of how much you bought it for. Um, so if this is a bigger amount, you'll have to do research on your end, you know, and try and find out how much you bought that stock for. Okay. But $42, I'm not going to, you know, worry too much about something like this. So I'm just going to report it all as gain, um, for tax purposes here. So we'll say this is short term basis, not reported. Um, okay. So it could either be right. B or E is what this is saying. So B or E. So if it's, this would be more conservative. You're going to get taxed at a, at a higher rate. If you hit the short, um, short term versus a long term, long term capital gain rates are better. Um, so you'll pay less tax if you do do the long, but, um, the short you'll pay more tax since we don't know really too much of the details on this. And you can actually see down here, right? Undetermined. This is it. This is that exact section. We'll see. All right, this was the stock that was bought, this ETF, okay? Um, proceeds, how much did we buy it for? When did we acquire it? Not a, we don't know. This is like an unknown here. So do, we don't really know. Since we don't know, I'm going to take the conservative route. Uh, it's $42. Again, not going to go too much, you know, into uh, researching this. It's not going to be worth our time to kind of do this, okay? So we're just going to report what they have here, the $42, what was it, $42.15, $42.15, and we'll say the basis is zero. Simple as that. All right, there it is. Done. Now we'll need to upload. Now we'll help you upload 1090B since ours requires a copy. Okay, let's see here. So we go here, hit our 1099 composite. That's it. Voila. Continue. All right, there it is. We're done. We got the interest, stock sales, and the dividends. Confirm. All right, check your capital gains. You have 4,000 in capital gains. Pretty good. There's about $1,000 in income there. All right, we're on to the next section. This is a withdrawal from retirement account that gets taxed here. So we get a 1099, what they call R, 1099R here. Okay, retire, uh, retirement account, IRA, 401k, those, uh, those types of things, okay? So let's go ahead and input this here. The one actually I'm gonna do here is, is actually a rollover from an IRA, traditional IRA to a Roth, okay? And yeah, it gets taxed, but we don't get hit with the penalty. But I'll kind of go over other common scenarios too that happen. So yes, I got a 1099R. Let's get impressed. Let's do it. Uh, how do I enter... 
or we got to enter it a different way. So I don't want to log into my account. Of course, it goes all the way back. Jesus. Um, and I don't want to log into my account because illustration purposes. Yeah, we don't want to go over that. So I'm just going to upload it here. Let's hit continue because I kind of made this one up here. All right, here we're going to upload our file. And yep, it's got it securely. Boom, taking all the information. Look at that thing go. All right, next step, please. Let's get impressed. Here we are. Okay, um, have more than one. You can start with any of them right now. We'll add the rest of Who gave you the 1099R? Financial institution, um, office of personnel management, US government, US government, or for annuities. These are rare. Those are super rare. Most common, of course. That's what it says right on there, Anthony. Okay. Let's get this stuff in there. So, of course, I kind of made this one up with all this information on there. So, let's just get this. Okay, here we go. We'll do the basics. One, two, three, main, Newport Beach, cool, California. Nine, two, there we are. There it is. Okay, we got to also make sure that's correct. That's coming from right there. Look at that. Pulled that in. Nice. Yeah, there's no continued name there. All right, let's go. Um, let's see here. Gross distributions. Those are correct, right? 59, 87, 54. Box one and box two. That's correct. Okay. It's not a total distribution, right? We didn't have that box checked. Taxable amount is not determined. Okay, we checked the right box there. No capital gains. No federal income tax withheld. None of those boxes are filled out. That's essentially the only box. And then we have box seven here that is filled out. We got box seven code two here, okay? So another common code is code one. So if it does have a one in there, unfortunately, that means you just pulled the money out and you actually got the money in hand in your checking account or savings. You got, the, you got that check, okay? Um, so you're going to have to pay the tax on this plus penalty for what they call early withdrawal. If it's a code seven, that means you're of age 59 and a half and you pulled the money out. So you're going to have to pay tax, but at least you won't get hit with that penalty, that 10% penalty. Okay. Um, there's a, obviously a couple more codes there, but those are the most common. We got this code too, because again, there was an early withdrawal, but there was an exception to the penalty. The exception of the penalty is this rollover to the Roth. Okay. That's what we did here. All right. So None of this applied. Cool, 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 cool. I don't know why it's giving me these things here, but nonetheless, here we go. None of this applied here. All right, continue. Great needs. You don't any extra taxes, but you avoided, right? Okay, yeah, okay, what? That's kind of a misnomer. But nonetheless, like I just explained, we're not going to get hit with the early withdrawal penalty, but we do have to pay tax on the withdrawal from the traditional IRA because it went in tax-free. So eventually, either regardless, when you retire or if you roll into a Roth, which is an after-tax account, then you got to pay the tax. So that's what's going on here. Uh, any of these situations apply? I took this money out due to... No, none of these apply. So these are some of the other... Ex I need to file. No, I inherited this IRA, moved... To my HSA, no, no, none of this applies to me. Those are rare. Uh, tell us if you move the money through a rollover, a conversion. Yeah, I rolled uh, over some or all of the to in those to a Roth. That's what I did. Okay, put it all into a Roth. Yeah, did it all. Okay, because if you got less, then they're going to tax you the penalty on the less amount because then you touched it. All right, so there it is. Have you ever taken a disaster distribution? Oh, so, okay, in 20, before 2021, no. So the disaster distribution, I would say that's another one of those COVID specials that happened for 2020 where you could pull out of a retirement account and you can, if it was COVID disaster related, then you could avoid the 10% penalty and you can have that taxed over three years instead of in just the year that you pulled it out. So that's what this is asking. If you did do that in 2020, then you'll have to have some of it taxed in 21 and in 22. So that's what this is going on here. But I'm going to say no for illustration, right? Repayments. That's what it is. All right, here we go. Repayments. Actually, you can repay that and not get taxed on it. That would be another situation as well. Any non-deductible contributions to your IRA? I'm going to say no. Tell us the value of your traditional IRA at the end of the year. So... 
let's say five thousand dollars outstanding rollovers zero zero deal let's do this all right there we go there's income right there all right so before we start this rental income and expense section here, there are a few documents that you want to make sure you have on hand, okay? Uh, let's see here. All right, so we want the closing statement, the HUD um, statement there. That's for the purchase of the property. It shows, like, you know, how much you paid for the property when you bought it, and it has some of those closing costs that we can deduct too. If you have a property manager, you should reach out to them, ask for that cash flow statement for the year that, you know, this would be for 2021, but for the year that you're doing the tax return for if you have a property manager, most likely they're going to issue this 1099. So make sure you have this 1099 because that needs to get reported on the tax return. Those go to the IRS. We want to make sure that reconciles with our tax return. If you have a mortgage, you'll need to reach out to the mortgage broker to get that 1098 has the amount of interest, mortgage interest that you've paid. We can deduct that on uh, against the rental income, property tax bills any property taxes that you've paid with the assessment value. So we'll need this for sure year one because in order to depreciate the property, we got to know how much the value of the land is. And these property tax bills do have those assessments on there. You know, how much is the building worth and how much is the land worth essentially because we cannot depreciate the land. Um, and then any additional expenses that you paid outside of the property management, like if you independently hired your own, you know, guy to come to prepare the roof, prepare to repair the roof or, um, you know, do some plumbing work, or if you pay like any HOA dues. All right. All right. On to the next section here, we're going to do some rental income. So let's do that. We're going to start from the beginning here. Did you have any income from rentals? Yes, we did. All right, here, we're gonna do a rental property, not royalties, okay. We'll start with some basic info. Example, property nickname, rental property, say, Main Street, I don't know, Main ST, there we go. All right, yep, it's one, two, three, Main. Uh, we'll say Newport Beach, CA 92660. There we go. Continue. This is a single family. I'd say that's the most uh, common. Okay. Look at you. Can even get more though. All right. Tell us about your situation. Uh, this is the first time we've rented it. Okay. Obviously, other situations there, but that's not what we're doing here. It's going to do the rental property. Was the rental property every rented every single day of the year? We're going to say yes. Was it always rented at fair price, similar to other properties in your area? Yes, it was. It wasn't at a discounted price to like my uncle. Okay, no, this was a tenant here. Are you an active participant? You own, so you can be an active participant if you own at least 10% and you made the major management decisions of the property, such as approving tenants and authorizing repairs. So active participant, the reason we are checking yes or no here, um, this is going to allow a loss on the return. If there's a loss on the rental, uh, there are special rules for what we call passive activities on the tax return. And uh, if we click no, if we are not an active participant, we're a passive, um, then you wouldn't be able to claim a loss against like your other income. Now, you're not able to claim a loss regardless if your income's over 150. So there is caveats, obviously. But if your income's under 150 and you have a loss on your rental, then you're able to claim the loss in that year against your other income, which can be very beneficial. Now, if you have a loss and you have income over 150, it's not that you lose it. It just gets carried forward, like passive activity loss carry forward is essentially what it is until a year that you either have income with your rental or the year that you sell it, you get to utilize it, okay? Nine times out of 10, you are active is what I see, okay? Did you make any of these payments with the rental? Paid a contractor over 600 bucks, made any payments? So this is all um, to file a 1099 is what this question is, okay? So I'm gonna click no, we don't need to file a 1099. Did any of these uncommon situations apply? I was the only owner, I was not the only owner. Okay, there was several owners. Okay, no, my property is on the Indian reservations. No, none of these apply. Okay, let's see here. All right, this is it. This is my property. 
Looks good to me. All right, let's get into the meat and potatoes of a rental. Let's enter the income from the rental property. What type of income did you receive from this rental? If you received more than one, blah, 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 blah. Okay, I would say, you know, most of the times it's this 1099 that you're getting because people are hiring uh, property managers and then the property management is collecting this income and then giving it, then distributing it to the owner, you. So, and then the property management then has to send out a 1099 for the amount of rents collected is what they have to do. So that's usually what happens here. So I'm going to click this here. All right. And then we take a look at the 1099. All right. So the 1099 is going to look a little something like this. All right. And it's going to have, you know, the payer, generally speaking, this would be the rental property, you know, and the recipient, that's you. And then, you know, the IDs here, that would be like your social and that would be their EIN usually. Um, and then the amounts of rents collected. So that box one here is going to go right here. Let's say we collected um, 2,000 a month, 24,000 for the year. Federal income tax withheld, generally speaking, this is going to be a zero. Usually, I don't think it's very rare that that ever gets filled out. Um, how is your parents? We'll say this is an EIN. Who paid you? Um, property manager. And we'll say this is their made up one, two, EIN. Okay. All right. And obviously, you're going to check those, but those are rare that we check those. Okay. There's that. So that's the income section. Easy. Did you have any more income? Nope. That's it. That's all we had. Um, now, the expense stuff. This is the fun part here. Okay. Expenses and assets. You know, I kind of went quick there. Let me go back. Can we go back? Yes. What does this say here? Before we start, take a moment and understand the expenses versus assets. Expenses, essentially, you can take in the current year. Assets, we have to depreciate over the life of the asset. Okay, whatever the IRS kind of determines on that thing. Okay, so that's that's generally what this is saying. Okay, cost to buy, improve, rental, like the property itself, or additions and furnishing. That's what assets would be. Okay, what expenses, assets did we have? Deal, we'll say, you know, we bought the property, of course, that's an asset. Um, let's say we did like a roof too. We'll do one of these improvements. Um, we paid property taxes. Social Security, we didn't have any of these taxes, no. Uh, insurance, had to pay a, like a homeowner's insurance on this thing. Repairs, maybe we did some plumbing, uh, cleaning. Yeah, we had to clean the place. We hired a... Uh, a cleaner, okay, mortgage interest. Yeah, okay, we got a mortgage on the property. Gonna wanna expense the interest on that. Utilities, maybe the tenant is um, liable for supplies. Maybe we didn't have any supplies. Vehicle, see, you can even write off your an auto expense against your rental. Um, if you're driving, right, to do business for your rental property, those miles would be deductible. Okay, we'll click that here. Management fees, definitely paying a manager. Okay, professional legal fees. We had to do some tax prep. All right, we'll do that. Advertising, we're going to pass. Commissions, travel, not auto. Maybe this is like an out-of-state rental. You had to fly to get there. Uh, miscellaneous, learn more. What else do they have here? Okay, well, it doesn't give them too many examples. Anyways, all right, we'll say that's that. All right, um, which of the following best describes the work done? This would be about the repairs. Okay, well, I would say the repairs were um, plumbing. It doesn't give me an example here, but that's okay. Routine maintenance is what we would say that is. Okay, this is not replacement of the roof, which we will do. Okay, it's a repair, we'll say. Okay, continue. All right, here we go. Now let's enter in the expenses. All right, let's say our, I'm just gonna make these up here. We have 2,500 is our property tax, okay. Insurance premiums, let's say I pay like 950 for insurance premiums, sounds about right. Repairs, this would be plumbing. I'll say I paid, you know, 315 bucks for plumbing. Cleaning and maintenance, okay. We'll say we pay like $1,200, 100 bucks a month is what we're doing for that. 
All right, mortgage interest. That's when we'd have to take a look at the 1098. Um, yep, there it is, a 1098. Okay, so we'd have to take a look at one of these forms here, 1098 MORT. Let's take a look at this thing here. <clears throat> Okay, and this is what this generally is looking like. You're gonna put this box one right here into this right here, interest paid. Let's say we paid $5,000 um, and the lender is a mortgage bank. All right, if you paid more, right? They have some more additionals here. I paid more than what was shown in the 1098. Maybe you had a private lender, okay, that doesn't issue the 1098s. Did you refine, refinance? I'm gonna say no, we didn't refinance. If you refinance, that means you're gonna have an additional 1098, right? Um, because there would be two separate loans there. Vehicle, look at this, rental. Did you use your car or truck for the rental property? Yes, I'm gonna say we did. Okay, we'll say car. Um, what type of vehicle? This is an auto under 6,000, most common that I see. Um, we'll say at the beginning of the years when we first started using it, all right, uh, this is my car. Uh, was car veil for personal use? Yeah, it was my car, not just a rental property car. <laughs> Did you have another vehicle available for personal use? We'll say no, nah, this is my only car. Okay, did you keep track of the miles? We'll say no, I didn't keep track as most people don't. Enter the total miles I drove. Okay, total miles you drove for any reason in 2021. So the total amount that you put on the car, right? Insurance, I think average is 12,000. I mean, generally you're not putting 12,000 exact. So let's say we did 12,158. And how many did we put? Um, now enter the miles you drove just for your undefined work. This would be for rental, right? Um, I'm gonna say I drove, let's say, you know, 1549, not that many, but enough, okay? Continue. Were there four? No, that's I've already said before. I only have one car. Based on the miles you drove, your standard miles, nice, I'll take it, I'll take it. You can do the actual, uh, but generally speaking, the standard is better than the actual, and the actual is a little tougher because you actually have to go through all your receipts, and that would be like all your gas, all your maintenance, all insurance, um, right? Not just the amount used for the drive for the rental property, okay? So, and what they're going to do or what the tax return does is it takes a percentage of your total gas, insurance, maintenance, and the percentage is based on the mileage. So we have to have the mileage accurate, that's why, generally speaking, a lot of people, more people use the standard miles because it's a lot easier. And generally speaking, it does give you a big deduction that is comparable to the actual and sometimes even higher. All right, so there we go. We're going to use a standard. Did we use any of these parking fees, tolls, transportation? I'm going to say no. We didn't do any of those. All right, ka-ching. There we go. Did you want to claim another vehicle? Nope, that's the only car I have, and I already told you that, TurboTax. Continue. Management fees, right? So if we take a look at like the, um, man, do I have an example? Oh, look at that. I got an example for you. This is from like a generally, you know, property manager here. Look at that for this year. Um, and this is what they'll call like a cash flow statement. So you want to get a copy of this uh, from your property manager. And this will have some of the expenses that they have spent on, okay? So before they paid you, essentially. Um, and you want to account for these. So you look at that. They have a couple here. Okay, so this is obviously, you'll want that management fees. So we'll use that, 1139 deal. Continue. What else we got? Professional legal fees, let's say my tax prep fee, we charged 750 for this. All right. New rental pro okay, so that's probably the easier stuff, okay? Expenses against the income. Now, the tougher thing is probably here, right? We need to get some depreciation. This is an asset, right? We don't get to um, expense the whole amount or the whole cost of the rental property year one. No, the IRS does not allow that um, because it has a useful life of what the IRS says, 27 and a half years. So that's where we get... They call it depreciation expense. 
Tell us about your rental property. Main Street Rental. Was this property your residence? No, this is just a rental. Did you purchase this property? Yes, we purchased it. Okay, we'll get some um, details. Let's do it. So here we're going to need, right, that, uh, that HUD statement here. Uh, generally speaking, that has most of the stuff that we need. Receipts for any home improvements. Okay, like a property tax bill. Um, land and improvement value. This is, this is really important here um, because we cannot depreciate the value of the land on the rental property because land is here for infinity. I don't know. That's, <laughs> I guess, the, uh, the reasoning behind why we can't do that. So like, you know, again, this is generally how it works. Let's say we bought the property for 500,000. Um, we can't depreciate the 500,000. We have to allocate a portion of that 500,000 towards land. Let's say it's like, you know, 200,000. So we only get to depreciate the 300,000 is how this works. All right, here we go. Tell us more. Okay, we bought it at the beginning of the year, right? You know what? Actually, I have an example, I believe, here. Let's see. Ah, look at that. Blinked it all out. There's that HUD statement. And, of course, this has no values on when we bought it. Okay, available. We'll say it was available at the beginning of the year. What was the purchase price? So we look at this here. What was the purchase price? This was a cheaper property, $35,000. Okay. Five zero zero. Okay. We'll say continue. And then we can kind of go through this here, right? Um, 2765. But we need to know the details on that 2765. And let's see here. Abstract recording fees, legal fees. Okay, let's take a look. This actually gives us an idea. 1109, 11. Let's see how close that is. Where's the 1109? Of course, this one doesn't have the 1109. Haha, <laughs> fun stuff. Uh, 1111 is the other one it said. Well, it doesn't got that either. All right, what kind of closing statements or closing costs do we have on this here? Okay, paid from borrowers. This is us, so we paid. Okay, title charges. Okay, so there's our title charges. Do we have title charges on here? Title, there it is, boom. Okay, so we'll add those up. So we'll just get our handy-dandy calculator here. 575 plus 429. There you go. 1004. We'll put that right there. 104. What else we got? We have $91 government recording charges. Okay. Then we have all these fun things down here. Government recording. Do we have that on here? Okay. Well, of course, same thing is what it says. Okay. Recording. There it is. 91 bucks. That's what we paid there. Okay. What else did we pay for? Home warranty, HOA, 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 transaction, okay, escrow paid, escrow pad, whatever that is. Okay, so let's see here. The home warranty, this should be like a direct expense on the one of those expenses. This should not be on the asset. So I would go back and put that in there. Okay. Um, let's see here. Paid for the seller. Okay. So, and then like all these HOAs would also be an expense on the expense. So this would not be as an asset here. Transaction fee. We can do that. Escrow pad. Okay. We'll say these are transaction title. Hmm, exactly are these ending up transaction fee, escrow pad. Well, it's none of these. We're just going to hit continue because these we should get though. Okay, well, maybe not. Man, I'm not exactly sure where in TurboTax these are supposed to go here. Transactions, fees, we should definitely get these both in there. 295 plus 200, 495. You paid for the seller. Definitely didn't pay those for the seller. Transaction stamps, title insurance, land insurance, no. We're going to add that into these abstract and recording fees. So 495 plus the 91. There we go. 586 is what we're going to do. Okay. Continue. 
What improvements did you make before renting out the property? I'm gonna say we replaced the roof and we paid, I don't know what the cost, 3,000 bucks, probably more, but I don't know. Continue. These are uncommon, okay? Energy credits, this is pretty cool. So you can do like energy credits. This would be for, oops, for um, like energy efficient doors, windows, insulation, uh, HVAC system, water heating, okay? Um, there are certain products that qualify for those credits, which would be cool. Um, but then any of these others, you would probably know if you got those, okay? All right, on to the next. We don't, let's say we don't have any of these. These are actually kind of rare that um, people have any of these though. So far, rental property cost basis, there it is. 35 plus all that other stuff that we spent, right? The 3,000 plus the closing cost there. We'll use the land and improvements. So now we have to take a look at a property tax bill, okay? Uh, the property tax bill will have the, the land and the improvements. The improvements is essentially the building itself um, separated out and then, you know, to get their assessment on the cost um, or like the value of your house, sorry. So let's say the 35000 if we looked at this thing, what was it, 35, sorry, this one was 35, five. 35, I don't have the property tax bill in front of me here, but let's say it's point, let's say 60% is the land, we'll say that, 21,300, minus 35,500, 14,2, there we go. All right, so that's our, what we call, cost basis depreciable, right? We cannot depreciate land. So there it is, continue. Rental expense deduction, this is, <laughs> rental expense, this is be, I would, if you look at the tax return, this says depreciation, not rental expense deduction. Okay, there we go, let's continue. Okay, so what I would do, right, after I looked at this particular one, um, and I saw all these expenses here, I'd write all these off as like a direct expense, okay? Um, I already put the improvements on there. I'm gonna delete that one because that's already on there. Um, how do we add another expense that maybe we missed? Another rental, add expense or asset, there we go. Okay, let's do this. Um, HOA, let's do an HOA expense. Miscellaneous, there we go, continue. There it is. Let's put that HOA in there. HOA. Whoops. HOA. All right. This one has. Let's open that guy up. Handy dandy calculator. Where's our HOA? We'll go 275, 405 plus 135. Boom. 118 or 8, 815. 815. There we go. Add another row. We'll do also that home warranty, right? Home warranty. Spell that right. A N T Y. Okay, three sixty. Three six zero. Oh, there we go. Okay, continue. What else? Okay, we're gonna say that's it. Carryover, uh, carryovers, limitations at risk. So if you have done your tax return previously outside of TurboTax with this rental. This would be really, really, really important to do properly because there's probably carryovers. Um, generally speaking, a lot of these carryovers for rentals is entering in the accurate, you know, uh, prior depreciation. So we're not like double dipping on depreciation, getting too much of that expense. And the passive activity loss carryovers that happen here. Okay. Um, so. Those are a little tricky, believe it or not, but nonetheless, they would be really important to make sure that we carry over properly. So when we go to dispose of the property, we have the correct basis and we do utilize any of the passive activity loss that has not been realized previously. Okay, well, there we go. That's what we got for our rental. Oh, look at that, QBI Safe Harbor. Qualified business income is what this stands for. Oh, of course, there it is. And they got a nice little link on what is that stuff, okay? Um, but essentially, 
does this qualify? You know, nine times out of 10 people do qualify um, their rental as a QBI. Okay, that's the short and skinny on it. What is this? So they're going to have like all these rules here to do the safe harbor. What's going on? Okay. No, yes. Okay. Um, so perform 250 hours or more in rental services across all properties. So part of that 250 hours for the year is kind of like checking in on property management, um, you know, fixing anything or, you know, the, the drive time, anything related toward that rental. Okay. 250 hours is that requirement. And what is 250 hours? If you do 250 divided by 365 days, that's less than a half hour a day. Let's say 52 weeks, 250 divided by 52 weeks. That's less than five hours a week. Okay. Um, and that also would be like, you know, admin work too, like, you know, keeping track of your income and expenses on your end too, not just the property manager because, you know, they're going to have their own cash flow, but then you also have expenses outside of property management, like maybe HOA, property taxes, mortgage interest, those types of things, making those payments, right? That would be counted towards hours of the rental services, okay? Uh Kept separate, uh, separate records showing income and expenses, right? So we do, we, most people have that. Didn't use it as your residence. Didn't use triple net lease. You'll know what that is if you did that. Uh, didn't rent to commonly controlled business. So again, nine times out of 10, we're going to check the yes bo uh, box there. Okay. Um, con uh, confirming property type and description. There it is. Okay. It's a residential single family home. Boom. Let's cover some uncommon issues. Business income needs to be adjusted okay deductions from other topics are related to this business i need to adjust gain loss uh oh the geez what is this this is the assets for the qbi um i'm gonna say no the business has wages very uncommon i do not see these at all very commonly okay i'm gonna continue ein there's no ein on this thing it's just my social uh, very rare that people have an EIN for their rental activities. Okay. Um, do you want to provide more info about this business in case it is needed later? Might exceed uh, 164. So let's take care of it now. So th this has to do with that loss is what this looks like we're doing. 150. Um, okay. Got it. No. Great news. You get a tax break. Okay, that's the QBI. Okay, deal. Oh, so that's what this was in relation to. That 164 is for the qualified business income deduction and how to get that um, based on this rental income. And there are limits to your income in order to get that qualified business income deduction, QBI. All right, here we go. Continue. And there we go. There's the QBI. Got it. Okay, continue. Are we at the end of it? Voila. Wow. There it is. So out of our income, minus all the expenses, that's what we got left over. Rental properties. We're done. All right, I'm going to skip the business credits. Let's, let's take a look at the business credits, actually. All right, other business credits. Credit for federal excise taxes paid on fuel, pension plan, startup costs, investment credit, low-income housing credit, small business health insurance credit, general business credits, passive. These, let's see here, visit all. Okay, wow. Well, this is going to take some time. These are less common. Okay, so I'm going to actually stay away from this uh, on this video. If you do want to see this, make sure you include a comment and let me know which one you want to see, and I'll go through it for you. Okay, let's see. What else can we go through? Uh, the HSA. Okay, let's do this one. Edit. Let's go here. Okay. Um, HSA. If you have an HSA and you use your HSA throughout the year to pay for doctor's visits, the dentist, prescriptions, whatever it may be, um, but you used your HSA account, you will receive a 1099 for that. Now, is it taxed? Most likely not, but it could be if you use the HSA for something that's not a health expense, okay? So what we need to do on the tax return is essentially just report it and say that it was for health 
expenses and then it won't be taxable. But if you don't report it on the tax return, then the IRS is going to send you a love letter saying, hey, looks like you missed this and we are going to classify it as income. So, um, and then you got to have a fun deal responding to that letter. It's not fun. So if you have an HSA, you used it, go to the bank that has the HSA um, and grab the 1099 uh, from them. Okay, let's take a look at how TurboTax does this. Okay, tell us about, so normally, again, we're going to go through HSA. We'll click that box. Uh, payer's name, we'll say HSA Bank, um, one, two, three, Maine is always our address, Newport Beach, this is all be from the uh, 1099, so if you look at the actual 1099 here, it would have it, right, all that information right here, okay, uh, CA, and two, six, six, zero, and that EIN, you'll see, where is it, right here, that's where the EIN would be, okay, we'll just do our normal, there we go, continue. Okay, and that's me. Yep, that's me. And then gross distribution. So you'll look here, box one, gross distribution. That's essentially gross distributions. There we go. Um, is how much you used from your account. Okay, um, you'll put that amount here. Let's say we did a thousand bucks. Earnings on excess contributions. Um, that's maybe if, let's see here, this account is invested and obviously earning money, you'll put it there. But nine times out of 10, people don't have that. Distribution code. We'll say this is a normal distribution to be right here where that reports that normal distribution for market value on date of death. Um, we're going to skip that. All right, HSA, here we go. Thousand bucks. Did you spend on medical expenses only? Yes, this is what you'll check most of the time. That's what we have here. Um, you can check this here. What is medical expense? But you'll see kind of a lot of stuff does qualify. Okay. There we go. Done. Did you inherit the HSA? No, we contribute to this ourselves. Did you put money into an HSA? Yes, we'll say. Um, so this would be right from the W-2. Okay. So normally, these amounts do get reported on W-2 if you're contributing to the HSA. But if you're contributing, contributing to it outside of payroll, um, you can put that amount here. And we'll do that here. Let's say we put 500 bucks in. Okay. There we go. Did you, your employer tell you about any other contributions? It's uncommon, but sometimes um, we're going to say that. No, it's very uncommon. Do you have Medicare? No, don't have Medicare. Were you covered by high deductible health insurance? Yeah. So in order to have an HSA, you must have been covered by this high deductible health plan. What type of coverage did you have? I was covered by a family plan. Um, the reason there are these questions is because there's like a max that you can contribute to an HSA based on the type of plan that you have. Okay, so we'll just say this is a self only. Did you overfund it? How do I figure that out, right? Um, check your 2020, got it. So previous years, that's what it is. Okay. So you would have to take a look at, at that 5329 from the prior year's tax return to see if you ever funded it. Um, we're going to say no, there it is done. Voila. HSA is done. Okay. On to the next gambling winnings. All right. Let's take a look at gambling winnings too. Did you win money or other prizes in 2021? We'll say, yeah, we were lucky. Um, did you receive the W2G? We'll say, yep, we wanted the slots, which is generally where I see these things <laughs> get issued for. Um, and we got the W2G. You'll know if you, you're getting one of these because if you win at the slots and then, you know, then then the hotel, you know, staff comes over and they ask you for all your information uh, because they're going to issue one of these things. But nonetheless, you look at a W2G. Let's say, take a look at it. W2G. That's pretty straightforward, though. Here we go. Thank you, IRS, for that. There it is, right? Um, so it's going to have, you know, the payer's information, which is what this is asking for. Okay, we'll say casino, uh, one, two, three, Newport Beach, CA, nine, two, six, six, zero. There we go. All right. And then it's going to ask, you know, what did you get? Let's say we got 1500 bucks on the date that you want it. It'll have all that information right here, okay? Um, but let's say we got it 6-1-2021. Federal income tax withheld. Generally, people do not pay taxes when they get this. Uh, so we'll put zero, okay? Everything else doesn't really need anything. And state information would be down here. Um, but again, generally, people are not paying tax on that. So we're just going to hit continue. Let's confirm the winner's address. Okay, yep, that's the winner's, right? That would be the winner. 
And that, that's where you'd put that, okay? Continue. That's it, done. Uh, let's check for winnings not reported on the W2G. Here we go. Did you receive any other gambling or lottery winnings not reported? I'll say no. This is the only thing I got. Did you win any other prizes? No, I didn't. That's it. That's all I got. 1500 bucks. Losses. Okay, you can deduct up to the amount that you win. Is that what this is saying? Uh -huh. You can deduct the amount that you win. There you go. An itemized deduction if you itemize. Okay, so this is... There's always like a misnomer. You can deduct the losses. Yeah, maybe if you itemize, you can. So anyways, um, generally speaking, people are not like, you know, becoming rich from gambling. They're losing money because that's why casinos right, um, have that business. They make money off these gamblers. Um, so generally speaking, you're losing probably at least what you won. So it's not far-fetched to put the amount of losses that you won, right? Okay. All right, that's it. What else we got? All right, done with that one. Alimony received. Okay, here we go. So let's see here. Prior to the TCJA, right, um, it was like the Trump's 2018 tax law changes. The person who is paying alimony gets deducted the amount on their tax return as like an adjustment. Um, and the person that's receiving the alimony has to pay taxes on the alimony received. Now, if you got a divorce and a settlement from the courts after 18, um, most likely you would not report the amount that you get as alimony as income because the person that is paying the alimony does not get to deduct it on their end. Um, so essentially that's how it works. But nonetheless, if you do have a settlement that was prior to 20, shoot, 2018, um, then you still have to follow kind of the old rules here. You know, if you pay alimony, you get a deduction. If you receive alimony, you report income. So that's what we're doing here. Did you receive? Yes, we did receive uh, alimony. And we'll just say, right, how much we receive. Let's say $12,000, $1,000 a month. Date of the original, we'll say 2017, right? Okay. You're right. This is that 2018 tax law change, right? It was after 18. Okay. Continue. It's pretty straightforward. I mean, that's it. So we just reported the income, 12,000 bucks. That's it. Done. All right. Sale of home. All right. Let's do that one as well. All right, TurboTax, selling your primary home and putting that in here. Let's get going here. Okay, this is what we got. Um, I guess before we get into actually in putting this into TurboTax, this are, sorry, these are the documents we'll need to get this done, okay? You'll need the 1099S, um, which reports <clears throat> the amount that the house sold for. You'll need the closing statement that you got that has all those like debits and credits for all those miscellaneous fees, plus like the, you know, the amount you paid for commission to the realtors. If you paid uh, for any improvements to your house throughout the time that you live there, like let's say you built a fence or you put a new roof on this thing or you know you did an addition, you remodeled the kitchen, yada, yada, yada. Any of those, we need like total amounts that you've paid for improvements on the property um, as that can help out with taxes. <clears throat> and you need the purchase price and the date that you bought the house for. Okay, now once we have that cleared away, we're ready to go. All right, here is where we get this done in TurboTax. Okay, and I'm gonna get some documents ready for us too. Okay, there's that. Seller's closing statement, got one redacted. Okay, good deal. Um, and then a 1099S redacted. Okay, and we got one of those ready. Okay, deal. Back to TurboTax. Sale of your main home. Okay, there it is. Um, where's the question here? Did you sell? Yeah, our home in 2021, we did. All right, <clears throat> sold the home. If you made money on the sale of home, we can find out if this is tax-free. Okay, generally speaking, what this is kind of going into, generally speaking, when you sell your main home, you don't pay taxes on it because we get this exclusion from tax of 250 if you're single or 500 if you're married on the gain of the sale of the house. Now, the gain is figured on the difference between the purchase and the sales price minus 
you know, a lot of those fees that you're paying for in terms of on the transactions for the commissions, et cetera, and then also minus any of those improvements that you've made to the property. Okay. So that's what this is saying here, which is what we're going to need Date you sold selling price that you bought purchase price, the improvement 1099 C, um, if you did a short sale, but you'll have the 1099 S right is, is which looks something like this. Um, this is more common is what we get, okay? All right, here we go. <clears throat> the address, our address we always use, 123 Main, Newport Beach, CA 92660. There we go, continue. All right, did you receive a 1099S? We'll say yes, here it is, okay? It's gonna have the closing date and the amount that we sold it for, okay? Um, so that's what we'll do. <laughs> Date sold, uh, 10, and that, again, it has it right here. Date sold, there it is. 10-7-2021, 10-7-2021, selling price, 773, whoops, 3300, three, zero, zero. there it is. Sales expenses, okay, here we go, right? That's where we're gonna need this guy here, okay? This is the um, the closing statement. You're going to get this from, geez, I'm not exactly sure. It's either like the title company or the escrow company. They will provide this for you. Okay. Uh, this is obviously a closing statement that is different from the 1099 S. Uh, but nonetheless, it, it's pretty similar, right? 1.5 mil. They sold this one. That's pretty good. Um, but anyways, we'll be able to deduct, right? These, these are selling expenses commissions, right? That were paid minus this credit actually. So this is how we would do this. We're gonna take a look here. Three one zero 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 plus three eight seven five zero. Man, they make a lot of money doing that. Minus seven seven five zero. Okay, this is what we paid. Um, <clears throat> let's see here. All these title charges are um, deductible too. So we're gonna add those in. Three two one one plus one seven zero five plus six two point five plus five. There we go. Okay, uh, escrow charges as well. We'll get those. Okay equals all right 70k we're at let's see here loan payoff okay that's not an expense there it's paying off your old loan taxes <clears throat> that should actually go as an itemized deduction this would not be a selling expense okay so let's see here and then um warranty if you got to pay for the warranty hazard fee time all these would be selling expenses too so let's add those in plus 730 plus 94.95 plus 30 plus 75 all right 71k is what we get as a selling expense okay let's do it 71262.7 there we go all right zero Add some change there too. All right, continue. We'll say yes. There we go. There it is. Deal. Continue. Um, date we bought the house. So um, you should be able to get this from there's like a closing statement then too. I don't have an example of that, but nonetheless, you should be able to get that there. Um, if not, a lot of times. <clears throat> Also, what I'll do is um, on Zillow, they have like records of these things. So you can just look up your address on Zillow and you can see, you know, date and purchase price. You probably already know what you bought the thing for, but nonetheless, um, put it in there. I'm just going to make this up here. 20, we'll say uh, five. There we go. Adjusted cost basis. So adjusted cost basis, they're going to say, you know, um, any of the improvements, right? We can add the improvements here. So the original cost plus improvements essentially is what it is, okay? But these are, are, are a little less common um, in terms of figuring this, but uh, nonetheless, that's the most common. You go the purchase price plus improvements. So let's say, right, we sold this 700,000. Let's say we bought it for uh, 450. Plus we had 100,000 in what do we call it? Improvements. So 550 is what we put into this house. Okay. Continue. Time you live in the home. So this is how you get the exclusion. So like I said at the beginning, normally people don't pay taxes when they sell their primary home because you get to exclude up to either 250, 250,000 of the gain. Um, when you sell, right? Let's see here, up to $250,000 of the gain if you're single or 500,000, if you're married filing jointly, so, but you only get those exclusion. If you live there 
two out of the last five years. And that's what this is 24 consecutive months. Or they don't have to be consecutive. So um, two out of the last five years before you sell. That's exactly what this is explaining here, okay? Did you leave there is what it's saying. I'm gonna say, yes, I did. It was my primary home. Did you use the home for anything other than the primary home? No, this is only my house here. I didn't use it for uh, a rental or anything like that. Um, did you sell another main home? No, this I've been there since, what did I say, 2005. Been there for a while. Uh, did you either did you do either the following with your main home? Take office deduction or rent it out? No, I have not. Okay. Exclusion, you don't have to pay any income tax on the sale. There it is. There's my gain, 152, because um, I get the 250000 as an exclusion as single. And that's it, I think, hopefully. Let's see. What else? Do you think you will sell another primary? Ah, tax strategy. I'm going to say no. I'm not going to sell that. Okay, there we go. So sales price. So I'm reporting it, but it's not getting taxed. Awesome. All right, that's it. All right, TurboTax deductions and credits. Let's go. Let's get this done here. All right, we're going to start off with the mortgage interest. You got a house, you get to write off the mortgage interest potentially. So let's see if it'll uh, help us out here. Might as well get it in there. So you're going to need that form 1098 M O R T, mortgage interest statement, something like this one here on the screen. Okay, um, here we go. So, yeah, we got it. Let's hit yes. Uh, let's get impressed, TurboTax. Show me how it's done. Continue. Okay. Um, oh, awesome. You can log into your bank, or I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to put in the form and I'm going to upload it from the computer and let's see what happens. Let's just drag and drop. Getting the info from your 1098. All right, TurboTax, let's see what happens. I want to be impressed, impressed here. Oh, mortgage name. We'll just say mortgage. Didn't properly get it. That's because I edited this PDF probably. If you have like the original, I bet it gets it. TurboTax yeah, is actually pretty good at that. Do you have any of these uncommon situations? Someone co-owns this loan and I only pay it. No, the seller is financing. I'm going to say no, none of these apply. Um, obviously, those could. Um, and if they do, check the box. There you go. Oh, look at that. Impressed. Okay, deal. We want to double check that these numbers um, are actually from the form, right? But you can see that it is. Get back over here. Here we go. Uh, 9,838. No, 9,838 and 26 cents. There it is. Okay. Outstanding mortgage principal, 15,000. Nah, that's, see, that's wrong. Okay. We got to make sure we get that correct. So it's six, six twenty four seven zero six point one eight. 706.18. Um, that's correct. Mortgage origination date. Um, no mortgage insurance premiums. That's good. Okay. And property taxes. So if you, let's see here. A lot of times, where do I see property taxes? Property taxes go... Is there a box 10 here? There it is. Yep, duh, right in front of my face. Property taxes. So if you are having your property taxes impounded through escrow, I believe that's the right term, essentially you're paying property taxes with your mortgage payments every month in an escrow account, and uh, then they are going to report the amount of property taxes on this 1098. Now, it's not always necessarily in this box 10 right here, Sometimes it's in like an additional statement down low or something like that. Um, sometimes it's up above I've seen also. So um, just kind of look around for that. You'll find it though if you are. If you're not, then you have you have to go and see, you know, those checks that you wrote for property taxes during the year. Okay, so generally speaking, a lot of times counties have the property taxes split up semi-annually. So you'll make two payments within the year, but the way they will split it out is they'll have like, let's say a 2020, 2021 tax payments and then 2021, 2022 tax payments. You want the payments, you want to put the payments that you've made during the year, regardless of what um, tax year that the county has. Okay. So it's whatever checks that you wrote during the year, that's what we claim on the tax return. All right. Anyways, there we go. So they didn't get the property taxes. Let me get that in there. 9092.46. There we go. Uh, box 11. 
mortgage acquisition date. Leave blank if empty on your form. Simple enough. There we go. Got it all in there. All right. Voila. Is this loan secured by a property you own? Yeah. I mean, that's say nine times out of 10. That's how it is. It's your primary home. Yep. This is my house. Did you pay points when you took out the loan? Um, no, I'm going to say no, I didn't pay any points. I've already deducted. That's usually what happens. You deduct it in the year that you pay them. And th that would be on your 20, well, in this case, 2020 1098. And they would have that. Where is that normally reported? Points. There we go. Let's see if this is the most recent form for this loan. If you have a 10 night, you're working on now the most recent loan. Yeah, so the, the reason it's asking this is because, yeah, there it is, the refinance. Uh, because if you refinance your loan, then you would have two of the 1098s here, one for the old loan, one for the new loan. So I've seen that definitely mistake happen before where I only get one 1098. And then I find out that uh, there is another one out there because they ref refinance the loan. So make sure you don't miss that, okay? But in this case, let's see here. Yes, we're going to say this is the most recent. Uh, let's get some details about this loan. Is this the original loan? We're going to say yes, this is the original loan. I bought it in 2020. Okay, done. On to the next. There it is. Okay, property tax. So we'll get both of those potentially as a deduction, itemized. All right, what else do we got here? TurboTax. Okay, one, two, voila. Advanced payments. Okay, there we go. This is a popular one for 2020. And look at, they got a nice video for us. Uh, let's check for child and other dependent credit. So I'd like to say the child tax credit for 2021 is another one of those COVID specials because they increased the child tax credit. 2020, it was $2,000 per kid. Um, and in 2021, it was either 3,600 bucks or 3,000, depending upon the age. I believe is if you're under six, it's 3,600 bucks. If you're over six, under 18, then it is 3,000. So they increased the credit, COVID special. And generally, well, normally you get the child tax credit as a credit on the tax return. So it all comes when you file your returns. But in 2021, people were paid throughout the year, half of the credit. So this is where we need to like reconcile that payment that was made previously to what you should actually get based on your tax return now. I'm assuming that's what this video is going to explain here. Yeah, right, okay. So let's get going here, continue. Start off with the advance, right? How much were you paid in 2021? So you would need this letter, right, that the IRS gave you, or, and this is not actually telling you, or you can log into the IRS's website, and that's what I would do, IRS child tax credit. Let's see here. If you have a login, if you don't, I would highly recommend that you do create a login. There it is, advanced child tax credit payment. So you go here um, and then you can sign into your account here and it'll tell you how much you were paid, okay? So either you get that form, uh, which I'm sure this page will tell you, or you can just you know get it from signing in here and getting that amount, okay? So in this case, let's see, do I have one of those? No, give me a second, I'll get one of those out here. Boom, found one of these letters, okay? Just redacted it so we don't see the information. But the good stuff here is box one and two, okay? That's what we need from the letter. And this is what it looks like. You'll see it came at the beginning of the year. That's what I'm assuming. Yep, there we go, box one. What does it say? We'll say 1,800 bucks there. Continue. Um, was your main home in the US? Yes, it was for more than six months. Okay, continue some of the criteria to get this credit, right? These don't apply to most people, but we'll still ask. I earned income while in prison. The IRS notified me I need form. Okay, none of these apply to me, okay. If this isn't the right amount, the IRS might increase. We owe if file. So it's giving me this, this error here. Obviously, I'm just getting random files here. So it's giving me the error because I didn't claim any dependents on this tax return. And so it's saying, like, why kind of why did you get this essentially? Um, and if you don't have, this is actually like a really important. If you don't have the right amount, if you don't have this letter that you got, um, or you don't go on the IRS website to get the amount, 
then it's going to take a lot longer for the tax return to process because it's not reconciling with what they have on their end with the IRS. Okay. So, and they'll adjust the tax return if it's incorrect and your refund, if you're getting one, will take a lot longer to come through. Um, or if you owe money, they're just going to send you a new bill saying you owe more money. Okay. Um, so getting this accurate is super important. Okay. I'm just going to say yes. Um, okay. Boom. Done with the child tax credit. Look at that. All right, dependent care credit. Let's take a look at this one. This is another, what I call COVID special for 2021. They increase the amount of credit like big time uh, compared to all previous years. So how do we do this? Did you pay for child dependent care? Yes, I did. I had my kid at a preschool. I had them at a daycare. I had them at a summer camp. Um, where they didn't stay the night over, right? What's okay? Does my okay? We'll say yes. Here we go. Tell us a little bit about. Do you have a principal place of residence in U.S. for more than half the year? Yes, I do. Whose care did you pay for? Okay, we'll say baby. There it is. Okay, that's who I paid for. You can add another person. All right. How much did you pay for baby's care in 2021? We'll say, shoot, he was like, gosh, it's expensive. Preschool is probably like, you know, let's say it's 500 bucks a month. That's not too bad times. We'll say eight months we did it for. $4,000 we paid. Okay. There it is. So what I'd recommend, um, how much did you pay for? So the, let's see here, the daycare that you went to, the summer camp, the preschool that you went to, anywhere like, you know, the care that you had for your kid, uh, they went to, they should, you should be able to get like a statement from them with the total amount that you paid them. On there, it's also going to have the name of the daycare or preschool or whatever, their address, and most importantly, their tax ID. Okay, so you'll want to get like a copy of that. That's normally what I request from clients, okay? There we go, done. And here we go. I just, I knew this was coming, right? So this is the information that we need from that like statement, that yearly statement from the daycare provider, okay? So, you, you know, generally speaking, it's an EIN, they're a business. Yep, there we go. So we would just, you know, write preschool, whatever's on that letter, right? That's it. And then they're EIN. <clears throat> you want to make sure this is correct because the IRS is going to reconcile with what you reported with what that daycare provider reported, right? Make sure everything matches up here. Okay. Um, so that's why it's important to get that right. Um, you know, just put the, the numbers in here, 800. Well, voila, here we go. My standard one, two, three main. All right. Total amount paid. So this would be, again, on that statement. So 4000 is what I paid. Is your household employee. So this is actually like a super common question that I get right here. Um, if they're a household employee, I have a babysitter that comes to my house. I pay him cash under the table. Can I write that off? Well, it's under the table. So uh, unfortunately, right, then you wouldn't be able to get the credit because then they should – to get this credit, the person you're paying should report this as income on their tax return. So then we would have to get their social, right, and put that here. That's what this is asking for, right, up top here, okay? So if you had a household employee, the right way to do this is to put them on payroll, and that's what this is probably going to tell us, okay? Nonetheless, that's how it's just supposed to work. So if you didn't put them on payroll, we shouldn't get the credit here, Okay. Continue. Before we continue, we thought you should know. What should we know? Funds you pay for save on your taxes. Okay. You might also want to FSA. So FSA is through your employer. So um, FSAs are actually a great idea. I do have uh, YouTube videos on that. So if that's something you're interested in learning about, I do kind of go deep dive into how those works and which actually is better. Is this credit or is an FSA better? That's a topic for a later date though. So be sure to check out that video though if you are interested. There we go. Voila. Done? Are we done? Did you receive dependent care benefits? Uh, you, you may have reported employee benefits as other expenses on your rental property. 
No, this is this is uncommon. We're gonna say no. Did you pay for any 2020 care in 2021? I'm gonna say no, like a week, a daycare, but you paid another year. I'm gonna say no. Congrats, okay, finally, done, voila. Okay, on to the next one. Donations to charity in 21. Okay, so this is gonna be either cash or non-cash, i.e. like Goodwill, Salvation Army, etc. Cash would be like to church, right? There we go. So this would be not, this is non-cash, all this stuff, okay? Most common right there, right? Okay, uh, we're going to say yes, we did. Who did you donate to in 2021? Ah, okay, we'll say first one is church. And this one is just money. Oh, come on. Here we go. Money. Voila. One time, multiple times, same amount. Donations, we'll say every time we went to church, we put 20 bucks in the basket and maybe we went ah, every other week ish. Okay, done. There we go. 400 bucks. Add another donation. This is the most common, right? We all get rid of our stuff at Goodwill or Salvation Army. Ah, I'll value them or guide me. This is actually pretty cool. So, um, ah, yeah. So guide me. This is going to best if your um, donations are under 500 bucks. So they have like a, a pretty cool guide on TurboTax that like values all the different uh, items, right? Um, you can go through this and be like nitpick um, or you can do this yourself, essentially. I think this is probably going to take longer. You know what? Let's just do it. Okay. 2021 is when I donated, and now let's go add each item. Wow, see, here we go. I knew they had this stuff. Okay, so f clothing. Mm, let's say all the baby clothes, because we go through that all the time. Um, onesies. We got five onesies. High value or medium value? Wow. Okay. And you can just go through this, like, two, right? Fun stuff, man. This is actually probably the best way to kind of go about doing this in terms of like avoiding audit because this will keep good track. Look at that tracks, all that stuff right there. If you ever have an audit, you show them one of these things, the auditor is going to be impressed. Okay. I'm just going to hit done with that donation. Um, add or edit items. Let's see here. Now we're going to hit close. Don't save done with this donation. Boom. 34 dollars. And then you can add another one, right? If you did any of these other ones as well. Okay. Done. I'm going to say done with charitable donations. Great job. All right. On to the next deduction. Yes. Car registration fees. Okay. Did you pay for it? We generally pay for this stuff. Okay. And in California, you, this is real important. California this is where I'm at. You can deduct the vehicle licensing fee portion of your registration. So that's like the only portion in California that you're able to deduct. If you have the renewal notice the dmv registration notice on there it has like a separate line item that specifically says this may be deductible for taxes and that's the one that we can put here okay every other state we can just put the amount that you pay um let's say we pay 200 bucks for that okay for my car done is that it okay easy enough wow thank you this stuff hurts to go through huh fun stuff let's see here Man, my software is so much easier than TurboTax. Um, expenses and scholarships. Okay. Oh, okay. Here we go. So if you went to school and you paid tuition for the university, college, then we could potentially get an education credit so long that you're, you know, within the income limits here. And off the top of my head, I believe it's 150. If we're under 150, we can get these. Okay. There's two separate ones. There's either the American Opportunity Credit or the Lifetime Learning. American Opportunity is the first four years of university, second, what do they call it? Secondary education, something like that. Um, it's essentially university or college. Or the Lifetime Learning is after the first four years. So that's why they call it Lifetime Learning. It's not as good of a credit, but nonetheless, it's still, you know, you get a credit. But we do need that 1098 in order to do this, okay? And that's what this is saying we need to, to get here. The 1098, any other scholarships and any of the other um, expenses that we paid for going to school. So I'm going to say, yes, I do want to enter this stuff. 
Tell us which person was a student. I'm going to say myself. I'm a student here. Was Anthony working on a bachelor's or a graduate degree? Yes, I was. I was going to school to get a degree. Was Anthony's enrollment status? Oh, I was full-time. On the 1098, it would tell you, but you should know also if you went to school, if your kids went to school, what, you know, how often they were going. Let's see, I have a, yeah, look at that. Okay, there's a, um, an example of one of these 1098. See right here, it even tells me if you, you were at least a half time. So you could do that too, right, I guess. But it doesn't tell me full time. Okay, I'm going to say I'm a full time student though. Did you get a 1098? Yes, we did. If you didn't get a 1098, mm, it's not going to look good to, to get an education credit without a 1098. Okay, I highly recommend that we need one of those 1098s. You should be able to get the 1098 from the school, uh, your like, account online with the school. Log in, you know, get that tax form for, from there. That's generally where I tell people to go to. Okay. Um, let's see here. Upload my 1098 is what I want to do. Okay, let's do this. Let's see what happens. Come on. Get ready to be impressed, right? Isn't that what you tell me, TurboTax? Wow, nada, huh? Well, I'm sure my thing doesn't have anything. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> Okay, well, what's important? Okay, you obviously want to double check whatever they have here with what's on your 1098. But I think box one is the most important, right? Right there. Okay, so it's also, it could potentially have, right, if you got scholarships or grants, it's going to offset the amount that you have there. But nonetheless, there it is, the 506. Uh, I would need to actually enter all this stuff in. So I'm just going to do it real quick. Here we go. Nine, two, six, seven. Ah, whatever. Federal ID. Okay, at least I have time. Boom, it got that right. Okay, continue. Just entered it all in. Was Anthony's enrollment status at least half time? Yes, it would, again, it would show right here. It would have that box checked. Okay, continue. Did Anthony go to another school in 2021? I'm gonna say, nope, this is the only school I went to. Did Anthony pay for books or materials to scan school? Yes, I did. Okay. This may also include if they are paid using qualified education savings. Okay. But uh, let's see here. Books and materials required to purchase from the school. Um, let's say I purchased like three books, probably like 100 bucks a piece. Expensive, right? 300 bucks. Not required to be purchased from the school. Let's say like a laptop or something. 1000 bucks for my laptop. Did you take tax-free deductions from a 529 plan? I'm going to say no, I didn't, okay? Scholarships, financial aid, did I get any? No, I didn't. I had to foot the bill here, okay, for the 500 bucks. Had super cheap. Okay, had An Anthony earned four years of college uh, credit before. So this is in terms of, geez, it doesn't say the name here, but the American Opportunity Credit. So if you have already claimed, even though if you haven't finished Right, your bachelor's degree, uh, your first four years, if you haven't finished it, but you've taken four years worth of the American Opportunity Credit, you want to make sure that you don't get it again because that's massive flag with the IRS. They only want you to take it for four years. Okay, so if you haven't taken it, right, you would had – no, I would say no, right, if I, if I haven't taken it. But you have obviously checked the box. So I'm going to say no to qualify me for the higher credit, essentially. Is this Anthony's first year of college? I'm gonna say, no, it's not my first year. Did you ever receive the, there it is, or the HOPE credit. I'm gonna say, yes, I've received it before. Ah, look at that. I'm gonna say one year before I've had it before, and I've not had the HOPE credit, zero. Okay. The only way you'd find this out is by looking at a previous tax return. Geez, what's the form on that? Um, let's see here. 8862 education credit. Let's take a look. What's the form we use? Uh, come on. 88, I was close. 63, not 62. 
Okay, here on this form from a previous year to find out if you've had this, right? There it is, American Opportunity Credit. So if you've had this, right, down here, there's some number, you would look at previous tax returns, right? Four years again, if you've had it for four years, make sure we don't claim it again. If you haven't, then you can get it again, right? Uh, but then we have also the non-refundable. This is the, what, the lifetime learning. They don't have lifetime learning, but that's what it's called. Yep, there we go. So it's, there you go. There's the American Opportunity Credit. You would look at, again, 8863 to see if you've had this before. Oh, wow. Well, on this part, right? There we go. Again, 8863, previous tax years. Only one year before I've had a number on that line eight. Okay, continue. Let's see here. Mm, have I ever had a, a felony drug conviction? So I'm going to say no, I didn't. All right, there we go. Continue. You can't claim education tax break. Your income exceeds the maximum limit. I believe it's 150 is what that is. I'd have to look at that again, but I believe it's 150 is the amount of income that you can have. Well, you have to be under in order to get this credit. So I went through that and it was a total waste of time, but hopefully for you, you got, actually got the credit because you didn't, well, you didn't make that money or you haven't made the money yet because we all want to make more money, right? It'll happen. Did you get a 1098 student loan? I'm going to say, yes, I did pay student loans, okay? Just checking, is the in my name? Yes, the 1098E is in my name because I paid my student loans off. I know a lot of people this year have not paid their student loans because they made the pause on it, but in case you did, I'm going to go through this for you, okay? I do have a, look at that, we'll upload this, okay, whoops, not like that. Click this and continue, and then I drag and drop. Getting ahead of myself here. Another coffee break. Exit out of my other tabs. All right, look at that. Okay. I have what? Well, we double check. Well, that's not it. Editing software. There we are. 1098E, we have to double check the amounts on here, right? Student loan interest received, box one, 267960. See, they rounded up. Great job. Thank you. I'll take that round up. You, that's totally fine to do, rounding up to the next dollar. Okay, there we go. This should be it. Come on. Of course, I don't qualify because my income is too high, right? <laughs> actually, a lot of people don't qualify for this. This is a big misnomer, which I actually kind of get bummed out doing taxes for people. And they're like, oh, I get a deduction for my student loans that I've been paying. And then I'm like, oh, you made too much money. It's not that high of an income limit, okay, to make over to not get this deduction. Your income has to be lower than $85,000, so since I'm over that, they didn't give it to me. Oh, and 106. So that previous it had to be 100,000 for the education credit, the American opportunity. If you're single, it's 150 if you're married, filing joint. That's what I remembered. Okay, deal. Nonetheless, if you make over 85K and you're single, you don't get this student loan interest deduction. Waste of time on my end. Hopefully you got it and didn't waste your time. All right, what else do we get? Medical expenses, okay, foreign tax credit needs review. We'll take a look at that. A traditional, okay, medical expenses. Let's go through this. A lot of people don't actually get this. This, generally speaking, there we go. Oh, I'm glad TurboTax helps us not waste more time here going through this. I don't know why they maybe go through the other ones. Did you spend more than 8,000 on medical expenses in 2021? So the reason it's asking us this, because there's a threshold of, geez, seven and a half percent of your, what we call AGI, your income, your adjusted gross income. It has to be more than that seven and a half percent for this to even qualify as a deduction for you. So if it's not more than that, total waste of time. Okay. That's why it's asking me this. I'm glad they're not trying to waste my time. I'm going to say, no, I didn't spend over that. Voila. Thank you. We're done. Okay, but if you obviously spent more, then you just go through the uh, nitty gritty of, of putting down all the amounts that you spent. Foreign tax credit, I'm assuming this needs review because previously we got the foreign tax credit with one of those mortgage statements, um, 1099s, the composites from dividends. I'm assuming some of the stocks that we own have paid foreign taxes and then we'll get the credit here. So let's see this. Let's see what we got here, TurboTax. You're on track to get it. You're on track to get a tax break for foreign taxes you paid. Great, thank you. 
uncommon situation, paid on income I earn while working? No. I have foreign tax credit carryover I want to use? No. This is all from the stocks that I own. Looks like taking a credit puts more money back in your pocket. Continue with my credit. Wow, look at that. Good job. Didn't have to do too much, but nonetheless, this came from, again, the stocks that we own are paying foreign countries taxes, and since the U.S. doesn't want to double tax you, we get a credit for that, essentially, is what that is, okay? Let's say we made a contribution to a traditional IRA. That's what we're going to do, traditional IRA today here. Okay, we'll get the credit here. So... Tell us, did you make a contribution? I'm going to say yes. And this should be pretty straightforward. Is this a repayment? No, it's not a repayment. This is a contribution. How much do we contribute? I'll say 3000 bucks. Tell us how much of the above total contribution you contribute between. Ah, okay. So because you can make a contribution up until the due date of the original tax return, right? April 18th for this tax return of 2022 and apply it to your previous tax year. So like we can essentially, um, you, a lot of times what I do with clients is they wait until we file the tax return to see how much they want to contribute to an IRA to see kind of what that tax benefit is. So that's why the IRS allows us to see like, you know, how much do you really want to put in based on your income and what will that savings be? And that's what a lot of people do. Okay. So that's what this is here. Okay. Did you change your mind? <laughs> <laughs> no, oh, recharacterize. Gotcha. I'm laughing. Over to a Roth. Got it. So I'm going to say no, we didn't do one of these. Um, any excess IRA contributions? No, no excess. Any non deductibles? No, I want this deducted. Um, I mean, essentially, this is for yes, I made and tracked non deductibles. So this would be for what do we call this? If you want to do it like as a non-deductible, I believe it's 8801 is the form that we do that on. And that is for, geez, what is it called? The backdoor Roth. There we go. Backdoor Roth is what this is for, okay? Tell us the value of all your traditional accounts. 5000 bucks. okay? We had a little bit more. Income too high to deduct IRA. Look at that. Jeez. Waste of time. Thank you. So... Now that would be classified as like a non-deductible contribution to an IRA. And what I would recommend in a situation like this is then to convert this to or recharacterize this to a Roth, do that backdoor Roth, okay? Because you're not getting a deduction, but it's sitting in a pre-tax account. Then why is it in a pre-tax account if you didn't even get it pre-tax? So that's why I would make it go to a Roth to have it an after tax because that's exactly what's happening here. Just so it's easier to track later when you retire. Okay, continue. Here we go. What else do we have? That's it. Wrap up tax breaks. Okay, what's next? Other tax situations. All right. Nice. Let's check your home buyer's credit. So, right, if you bought your home in 2008, government said they'd give you a credit to make the to buy the home, but you have to repay that credit every year. If this is a if this happened to you, you definitely know about this because um, tax returns will get rejected if you don't do them properly. It's happened to me many times. But nonetheless, yeah, you got to start paying back some of this credit. I'm going to say no, I didn't do this though, okay? Because I don't have the form for this. Um, you can always, if you don't know the amount that you're supposed to be repaying, you can always log into the IRS and find out what you're supposed to uh, repay. They have like a nice little tool for this that I've done many times for clients. Yeah, we know. I don't get it. You wasted my time. Thank you, TurboTax. Look at that. Wait, here's how your retirement affects your income. Total taxable. I'm a little confused on what this is, to tell you the truth. I've entered in so many things here that I don't remember. 3000 is what we have as a contribution. Okay, wrap up my tax rates. Okay, we know that I don't get the deduction for the $3,000. Thank you very much because of over 76. Okay, deal. And I'm covered by a retirement plan at work. Okay, I get it. Here's how your retirement IRA distributions affect your... Ah, distributions. Got it. Because I... 
understand now. <laughs> Previously, I put that I had income from a retirement account, and that's what's going on here. Okay, so they're kind of reconciling what this is. Uh, total that I got distributed and what was taxable. Okay, deal. Right, I don't get any amount deducted. I know, you wasted time. Deal. Next, based on what you told us, itemize your deduction is best. Okay, so we do do the itemize. So standard deduction, that's head of household, right? This 21,000 would be mortgage interest, property taxes, and state income taxes that we paid limited to 10,000. That also includes, sorry, the DMV registration, all those three, that would be property taxes, state income taxes, and that DMV registration, all those together would be capped at 10. So it would be mortgage interest, 10,000 for state and local taxes, plus any of the charity that I had. That's what that 21,000 is there. Deal, I'll take it. Congrats, you get a tax break. QBI, qualified business income deduction, 20% of your self-employment income. That's what that is. Okay, get that. Um, other tax situations. Let's see what we got. Do you qualify for investment credit recapture? That's super uncommon. Did you hire a live-in nanny? We talked about this previously, but I'm going to say no. It's uncommon too. Do you want to put $3 to the, no, I don't want to put $3 to the presidential campaign there. Did you experience ID theft? Okay. This is super important. If, uh, you, this is uncommon. And I always find out after the fact, after I try to file the tax return, uh, that they are in this situation, like a client is in this situation, but you would get a letter from the IRS with this uh, IP pin. And if you got one of those letters, you should, you know, you got to put this yes here and you got to input this. If you don't, this tax return will not go through. Okay. So I'm going to say no because I don't have one of those. We're almost there. Underpayment penalties. Okay. So what is this? The IRS is like a pay as you earn system. So, you know, normally when you get paychecks, you pay. Hmm. You pay taxes essentially before you get the check. So like normally you're like, oh, I'm supposed to get a $3,000 check. And it's like, you know, $2,200 because all these taxes that were taken out of my paycheck and you know, your employer sends it to the government. Well, if you're self-employed, you need to go in and make those payments yourself. And those ones hurt really bad because you actually got the $3,000 and I had to go make that $800 payment or whatever it may be, right? Um, and that's, it hurts the wallet, but nonetheless, you need to make those payments on a quarterly basis, okay? Now, on this tax return, I have not put that I made any quarterly payments, so that's what they're doing here is they are now hitting me with a penalty because I didn't actually make those payments, okay? Let's see what they say. $37, not a big penalty. I would not bat an eye at something like this. But um, the more that you start to owe per year, the bigger that penalty will get. So it, then it starts you know, making sense that you do make those quarterly payments because eventually you're gonna have to make the payment anyways. Why not just make it on time, avoid the penalty, not pay the government more than you need to essentially. Fishermen, uh, farmers or fishermen was at least two thirds of your gross income. No, it was not. I did not do that possible penalty exception. So this would, you may be able to avoid this $37. If you can answer yes, to all the question was your liability in 2020 zero. I'm going to say no. Okay. I owe the $37. Okay. Single continue liability for tw uh, 2210 purposes, of course. They're going to make you look at this form. I'm just going to make this up, though. So uh, essentially, you would look this up. But again, don't get too worried about this if your penalty is not too big. But if it is, then you know definitely go through the nitty gritty of getting this proper because you don't want to pay more, again, more than you need to. Adjust uh, gross income. I'm going to say 100000 There we go. Annualize, no. Did you want to analyze your income? Uh, annualize, no. Actual withholdings, let's see here. Where's the question? Would you like to do this? For purpose of figuring your underpayment, you may elect to treat the tax withheld as paid when it was actually withheld. I'm going to say no. Make this easy. Date you'll pay the balance due. Shoot, I'm going to pay it ASAP. 07, this is when I'm making this video here. Okay. Pay today. Did any of these penalty exceptions apply to you? Say no. 
let the IRS bill me later. You could do that. And sometimes they won't even send this because the amount's so low. Um, I'll say I'll pay it now, though. So I don't have to deal with any IRS letters coming through. Okay. Reduce penalties in the future. Yeah. Um, what this is going to say is make quarterly tax payments is what that's going to say. Okay. But I'm not going to go through that right now. Done with the penalty. Wow. It was a long time for 37 bucks. Here we go. Did you get a third stimulus payment? Oh, this came out of nowhere. Super important that we get this accurate. Okay. So what was that? The $1,400, I believe is what that third stimulus payment that was made. There we go. March or May of, uh, between March, April, May of 2021. Okay, 1400 bucks. This stimulus payment, you would have got a letter in the mail telling you how much you got, or you can go on the IRS's website to find out what the amount you were actually paid. This is super important that you get this accurate because if you don't, your tax return is going to be delayed to process because the iris knows how much you got and if you don't report it properly there's discrepancies it's going to take longer for the process to happen so i highly recommend that you either get the letter that shows the amount that you got from the irs or you go on the iris's website what would i say irs stimulus shoot i bet it'll pop right up and i didn't even spell it right get my payment here we go Third economic impact. This is the one I'd click, actually. Third economic impact payment is what we're looking for here. Um, eligibility, get your payment. Um, right. So the amount that you got, this is what we're looking. You just click this, and you sign into your online account, and you'll be able to find out how much you got. Okay? And then you're, you're going to use that here. So I'm going to say, yes, I got it. I got the 1400 bucks. There it is, the letter. So it's, this is going to say, you know, the letter is what you should have got. I'm going to say, yes. I was eligible for $2,800 because I'm claiming a kid here. So 14 times two, right? We get the stimulus per person on the return here. So um, I'm going to say that, okay, I'll, I'll put the 2,800 bucks. We crunch the numbers and the amount you receive looks right. Wait, what? Does the amount, got it, I'm clicking too quick. Does this match the amount on your letter, the amount or on your online account, right? The 2,800 bucks. So I'm going to say yes, that it does. That's what I got. Now, the reason they're kind of going through this is they're reconciling. If you didn't get the stimulus and you're eligible based on this tax return, then you'll get the stimulus on the tax return, which is awesome, okay? So that's what's going on here. We crunched numbers and it looks right. Okay, good deal. The delete confirmation. The following forms are about to be deleted. You sure you want to delete them? Sure. Let's check if you need form 1095A. So 1095A, ACA insurance. Um, if you're in California, it's covered. If you had covered California, I know for sure we have these 1095As. If you don't have them, this return will get rejected. Uh, well, sorry. If you had covered California and you don't have the 1095A and you fi try to file a tax return, the return will get rejected. So we need to get that 1095A. You log into your covered California account. Now, if you're in a different state, I'm not quite sure what all the different names of all the different states, ACA, um, shoot, what do they call it? ACA insurance uh, is called, but I know they all have like their own little state name to them. But nonetheless, you'll need, if you got this, we will need the 1095A because we need to reconcile. Essentially, the way this works, plain English, is you tell them how much you make, right? 50,000. Then they give you they give you a shoot, a subsidy for based on the income that you tell them. So let's say insurance is $300 a month. I tell them I made 50K, for, I make 50K for the year. Based on that, they're going to give me a subsidy for $50. So I only have to pay $250 a month. So that $50. But when we go to do the tax return, that's when everything reconciles. I might have told them 50K and they gave me the $50 a month, right? But my tax return is showing 100K. Well, I'm probably going to have to pay that $50 a month back because I didn't make 50K. I made 100K. That's essentially what's happening here, okay? I'm going to say no because I don't have one of these readily available. But um, if you do have this, you cannot miss this. If It's not like you can decide not to do this. Your return won't go through, essentially, if you don't put it in. All right. Well, going to delete that page. Continue. All right. Let's check your federal return. Continue. Where are we at, huh?
Let's see, before we move on here, here's what our check found. Two details for you to review. What are the details? Answers, ensures your final numbers are right. Okay, let's see here. Stocks, mutual funds, what happened? Oh my gosh. I'm just gonna say stock. It wants to know what type of fund it was. Okay, 2020 is, when did you receive the investment? Date you dispose. Okay, proceeds, $100, $1,000, so I bought it for 900 Okay, deal. Continue. I paid sales expense. No, I didn't. I just bought these straight up on my brokerage account. Okay, done. Let's see here. What else do we need? Check this entry. Alimony received. Okay. So if I receive spousal alimony, I claim that as income, but you know what? I'm going to hit zero. I didn't get that. Recipients, wow, look at that. Um, oh, this is from the 1099 from my brokerage company. Recipients, well, of course. Okay, deal. Just going through some of this basic stuff. Again, you're going to have to look at these 1099s. Um, do I really need this? I don't even think I really need this. No, that's fine. Really, the I mean, the tax attorney is just going to want to know how much income we got here. So this stuff is it's not super important regardless that we get this on there. Okay, deal. Come on. Get through this. <laughs> Done. I'm going to just say continue. Okay, you still have a couple details to button up. Continue. All right, so I owe some tax because I have self-employment income. Deal. All right, <clears throat> on to the state return. This is the state of California that we're going to do here. So here we go. Let's get started. Sit back while we fill in your California return. Thank you, TurboTax. Continue. About your 2020 filing. Yes, I filed. Did you file with a different last name? No. Okay, there we go. Select your county. Let's say orange. There it is. Okay. Yep, that's where I live. Deal. You need to make electronic payment based on a prior year. I'm going to say no. Uh, so, of course, California has these requirements if you you know owe over a certain amount, make over a certain amount, you got to make, look at file and register tax liability over 80k you got to start making electronic payments you can't send in a check but i've seen people send in checks and i have seen them cash them so they want you to make them electronically i'm gonna say no wait, i don't need to do that though do you have a dependent you didn't claim on your federal return no we're doing the same did you have health insurance coverage yes we both had it all year so california let's see here i don't know exactly what this is saying but essentially where this is coming from is that um the what was it the trump tax law changes that happened uh, stopped the penalty for not having health insurance on your federal tax return but of course california picked it up so california now hits you with a penalty if you don't have health insurance that's why it's asking here but we're going to say that we did was anyone enrolled in any of these less common plans i'm going to say right cover california it's a Big one. If you had covered California, you're going to need that 3895, which you would get from your covered California uh, online account that you can get there. Okay. So if you had it, make sure that you put it on there. I'm going to say no because I don't have one of those available here. That's all we need. Okay. Deal. Any IRA distribution adjustments? I'm going to say no. We don't have this. About your HSA contributions, we've calculated subtraction. Feds give you a deduction for the HSA. California does not. That's what it does say there. Okay, thanks, California. More uh, California mortgage and equity interest adjustments. So you would can make this is uncommon. Okay, we're going to say no. There's no adjustments. Okay, there we go. Sales of personal residence because we did sell that, right? Wait, what's going on here? Okay, no, this is mortgage interest. I know that's uncommon. Okay, deal. Hmm, and then it, oh, geez, and then it skipped over that home sale. The home sale with California should be 
the same with the feds. It's rare that that changes, okay? I did, it's really rare that I ever make that change, okay? So I wouldn't worry too much about that. Enter grants received by shuttered venue operation excluded. From, my gosh, zero. This is super uncommon. I don't even know what that is. Enter amounts received pursuant to COVID-19 relief grant included in federal income. Small business relief grant included in your federal income. So if you got a grant from California, this would be subtracted out of your California return. Um, you'll know if you got one of these things. You applied for it. Um, well, it's taxed with the feds, not taxed with the state. But I didn't put this on my federal, so I'm going to leave it off the state. Okay, Uber driver business summary. Let's see. Okay. If you need to make changes, California differences, okay, then you put that here. Um, this is rare as well, okay? This same thing, rare that there are changes there, okay? Here we go. Information related to your business losses. Based on the information you provided us, we have calculated the following for you. In general, you do not make any additional entries. However, if you have business loss in excess of 259000 then see more. Very rare, super rare. It's a massive loss, right? Investment, interest, expense, adjustments. Uh, nothing was on the federal. To make an adjust, you first need to enter something on the federal. So, gosh, I don't know why they make us go through this if there is no adjustments. Your unemployment paid fund does not get taxed in California. Great. So, good deal. Any California lottery winning? Uh, you included winnings of, you know, 15 Hundred dollars you report on your federal. Is this California lottery? I'm gonna say no, right? We got it with the slots. California, right? We didn't do anything with the lottery, so there's zero there. Let's see California income tax. Okay, yeah, itemized deductions. We'll get the same. We should get that with the state too. Here's the income. Handles it differently, right? Okay, wait, this should not be income here. Okay, this, on the other hand, should come out too, okay. Home sale, the home sale should not, I'm gonna make sure that that does not show up on the return here. Wages, if any of these apply to you, okay, these are real uncommon, okay. We can kind of go through this. Water, energy, rebates, size, <laughs> these are super rare, all this stuff here. Okay, businesses, losses, investments. Man, none of these, this is so rare that I enter any of these into a tax return here. Okay, obviously if one of these apply, you go for it. But if not, you just hit done. Okay, for all AGI too high, okay. For the child dependent, dependent care credit, of course. Main Street, uh, small business tax credit. Do you wanna claim the Main Street? What is this here? A new credit, Main Street, is available to qualified small businesses. Okay. The credit is $1,000 for each net increase in qualified employee. Cannot include for taxpayers that elected to apply the credit towards sales and use tax. Ah, uh, this one's rare too. You normally do that with your sales and use tax. So I'm going to say no, we're not going to do this on the tax return. Untaxed, out of state. No, I don't have any of these either. Okay, this would essentially, California will put a tax if you say that you did not, if you purchased something that was not taxed. Did you make any untaxed out-of-state purchases? And if you did, California's going to tax it. I'm going to hit no. AMT, okay, we're going to hit skip. Based on your information, you, do, you don't have to pay AMT. I'm going to skip it if I don't have to pay it. Let's check for ways to save money. Health insurance, right? That's the covered California thing here. I didn't input that in there though. Earning and credit. I don't know why they're giving us all this. Most of the stuff I wouldn't even qualify for anyways because of the income. Estimated tax payments. If you made payments, that would be super important to put that in there, right? Real estate. When you sell your house, when it's your primary home, well, let's see here. I'm going to take a step back. California, if you sell a home, they're going to make you fill out this form. Shoot. 529... 592, 592, I think it is, okay, um, when you sell the home. Now, on there, it's essentially that that form is to withhold taxes on the sale during, like, the escrow sales process, okay? But if on there you're saying you, you sold your primary home and you don't need to pay tax, then there's no need to put that here. But if you sold, like, an investment property and you pay tax through the sales process, then you would actually, you know, 
put that in here. And that would be super important to account for any payments that you've already made for taxes, right? All right, what else is important here? None of these, these are all very rare, very rare. New employment, no. Okay, I'm gonna say I'm done here. Donate here, you can donate if you want. I'm gonna say no, underpayment. Would you like to review this topic? No, it's $11, you just saw that, right? 11 bucks, because I didn't make any payments. Okay, a few things before we wrap, wrap up. I feel like we've gone through this stuff here. California contributions, okay. <clears throat> estimated tax uh, taxes for next year, okay. That would be important, right? Because you want to make your estimated taxes. You can go through that. File an extension. Well, it's too late for that, huh? Change a previously filed tax return or amend. Okay, we don't have any of these things here. All right, let's check it over. Let's see. Make sure everything is accurate. Two things I need to fix. Care provided state, we'll say, see, I'm not even getting this credit, so I don't know why they asked for this stuff. Enter qualifying person's gross income. Well, it was a baby, didn't make any money, okay. Done with smart check. We're gonna say done with smart check. Your federal state taxes are ready. Let's file them together. Awesome. Yeah, we wanna file them both together. $49. Remember, California requires more taxpayers to file a state return. Delete my completed state return. I only want to file, oh my gosh. No, you want to file your state return. That's for sure, okay? Even though it's an additional $49. Reviewed, okay, done with the state. What's next, TurboTax? What do we have? Review. Let's run a complete check. Check my information. Looking over every detail of your tax return. Thank you so much. Coffee break. One detail to reveal. Let's see, what does it say? Okay, let's fix it. Alimony received. I've already went through this. Okay, none of this stuff. Okay, we already went through this. I'm gonna say none of this is important. All the address information for my bank and yada yada. Obviously, if you got it, you put it in there. I just don't have it, okay? I'm just gonna hit continue. Okay, more things to review. There we go, your final numbers. That's what I owe to both the Fed and the state. Okay, it looks good to me. Okay, well, I guess so far, I don't really know. I wanna take a look at the tax return. We can help you do more. If you choose, we'll, we'll document the info for your tax return and help you with more than just tax prep. What is this? Consent to disclosure of your tax information. Oh, geez, okay. You value your privacy, I'm filing jointly. No, this is just me. So I, I wait, I actually have to go through this. Okay, there's no opting out. If you choose to sign, we'll do, oh, you can decline, okay. If you choose to sign, we'll document the info from your tax return in your Intuit account to help you with more than just prep and filing. Oh no, what else is this for? I'm gonna say no to this. Oh geez, decline this. Let's put my name in there. And today's date deal and decline they're gonna sell my information geez that's not cool create your will with will builder I'm gonna say no thanks I don't want a will I want to file my taxes let's file let's see what it is review your order start reviewing my order is this price different than you expected no this is it, 168, okay, because you know we're paying that plus the state. Okay, deal, 168 bucks. Um, view my payment options. How would you like to pay for TurboDax? Let's pay with my federal refund. I'm not getting a refund, so I don't know why they have the option. Let's do pay with a credit card. All right, let's do this real quick. Two more steps before we file. Okay, now that I've placed the order, I wanna print my receipt. I guess that might not be a bad idea, huh? All right, so now that I bought the thing, 
Went through that fun process, paid the 168. Okay, let's start tax payment. How do we make a payment? Um, we partner with Credit Karma Money to get your refund up to, well, the thing is, I'm not getting a refund, so we're not doing that. How would you like to pay your federal taxes? Direct deposit, no. Direct debit from my bank account. File now and schedule a payment anytime up to, okay. Charge, request an IRS, okay. Easy, convenient. This is probably the most common that I do on tax returns for people. Or if we make a payment um, on the IRS's website directly. So you can make a payment on there. I have a separate video on that. So if you're looking on how to make a payment online with the IRS, you know, make sure to take a look at that. But it's either this or I do that. And I'm going to just say, okay, continue. You know what? I don't want to make a payment right now. Maybe I don't. Let's see. I guess, shoot, it's, it's forcing me to do this. Okay. See all payment options. Request, pay by check. We'll just say we're paying by check, okay? You selected to pay by check. This is how you do it, right? Make it out United States Treasury. That's the amount. Obviously, we're already late, okay? Deal. We're going to say pay by check. Here it is. Franchise tax board, 700 bucks. We're already late. Boom. Get ready to save and file your returns, okay? This is the super important. Let's get ready to file. I want to e-file, file by mail. Okay, you want to e-file, that's for sure. Before we e-file, we need to confirm some info. Continue. Okay. What tax paperwork do you have? We need to check your AGI. Okay, I have my 2020 tax returns. Okay, let's take a look. I did a 1040, that's the most common. Okay, make sure you have the right number. Got it. Box 11. Gross income, we're gonna say 100,000, okay? Re-enter it, because I guess TurboTax doesn't wanna file it unless you have this correct. Okay, I confirmed it, it's on there, deal. The correct engine, they make you click all of them, that's funny. Okay, next, what type of state issued ID do you have? Um, geez, I'm just gonna say I don't have that. We don't really need it. Consent, I consent. Let's make sure, what does this say? Consent to e-file your returns, right? I just click through that way too fast. Oh, Jesus Christ, they put me back to the beginning. Okay, I want to e-file. There we go, we got that info correct. I don't have my ID, that's fine. Consent to file, right? Allows us to process the return over the internet, okay? If you don't do that, you're not gonna be able to file. Make sure, I'm gonna say, if you're not able to fix this, your return, uh, you will return to the screen. You can print and fail. Okay, what happened? It's making me go through this again. Oh no. Oh my God, I finally fixed all those errors. So. I guess something I'm learning here is you, for all those 1099s for interest and dividends, you actually have to put all the information in there for the addresses on the banks that you receive those 1099s from, okay? It's not going to let you electronically file unless you do so, okay? So I finally got through that. I'm going to have to edit that out on those videos. Okay, continue to e-file. Let's go. Wait, go back. I want to go back. I saw a button that I think would be super important. Oh my gosh, this is very important, okay? So I would say before massive, massive for TurboTax, okay? If I'm, let's see here, before I were to file this tax return, this is my review normally when I do it for clients, okay? I would actually look at the forms that the IRS is getting. Now, I know all the time with TurboTax, people are telling me, well, TurboTax did it, TurboTax did it. I just answered the, all the questions that they had, the things that we've already just went through, right, to get to this step here. But you want to make sure TurboTax did it properly, okay? You're filing this tax return. It's going to have your name on this tax return as, as, as being the prepared, self-prepared. It's not prepared by TurboTax. It's prepared by you, 
Okay, so you need to double check this and I would highly recommend that you do. And really what we're looking for, right? We click this view forms, this thing's gonna pop up here and how do I just make sure that you don't see my social because it didn't let me do this without my social. Okay, let me, you know what? Let's just show it. Maybe I can edit this out. Okay, here it is. This is the tax return itself. It's got all these like cover letters for you know how to make the payment because I'm gonna mail in a check where that goes to important, right? Nonetheless, and it has kind of like a summary of all my tax return there as well. Uh, estimated payments, quarterlies, right? What I should pay this year for quarterly tax payments. And then for the state, same thing. Where do I mail this thing to? No, this is federal still. Okay. Meat and potatoes, at least on this PDF, is this 1040. Okay, we need to take a look at the 1040 here. On mine, it's page nine. Uh, but nonetheless, you make your you make sure the basic information looks right. Name, social, address, Dependence as well, right? And then here we go, right? All the income. Make sure all this income looks right. This is from W-2s. This is interest, the amount of dividends that you got from all the, the brokerage accounts you have, right? IRA distributions, okay? And then we have capital gains from stock sales, other income. I believe this is my self-employment income, total income. We have an adjustment, 500 bucks. I'd have to take a look at exactly what that is. Um, but nonetheless, you want to take a look at this. Make sure this looks somewhat accurate to you. I know a lot of this looks like gobbledygook to most Joe Schmoes that follow the tax returns on, on TurboTax. Okay, so it does look like gobbledygook, but do your best. I would definitely not file the tax return until I took a look at this. Okay, because if this looks all wonky. Okay you can almost expect to get audited, okay? Now, I've been in situations where people give me, you know, oh, I got this notice from the IRS. So I'm like, you know, who filed your returns? I did it through TurboTax. I don't know, TurboTax did it. I'm like, that's because they didn't actually take a look. And then when I actually looked at the thing that they filed and I showed it to them, I'm like, oh my gosh, I didn't even know. That's because they didn't take a look at it, okay? Just, just take your time. I know it takes forever to do your taxes and to go through all these steps with, with um, TurboTax, but trust me in the long run, this additional 20 minutes, 15 minutes that you're going to spend just kind of quickly, briefly looking at this to make sure that it looks like somewhat accurate is going to be worth it. Because if the guy that I helped out, or most of the times, if they had a looked at it, they wouldn't have filed their returns. Okay. So make sure you look at this. Okay. Let's see here. Adjustments to income, right? Alimony received. There's my self-employment, unemployment. Uh, compensation, gambling. Okay, they gave me the adjustment there. That's awesome. Okay, so there we go. Where was the 500 from? Ah, the HSA. Okay, they gave me the HSA. Deal. So there we go. This looks right. This looks good. Okay. Um, continue to e-file. Well, I'm not going to e-file this because this is not actually my return. This is all made up and just to show you for illustration purposes, but nonetheless, okay, I hope this was helpful for you. The next thing, you know, go, continue to e-file what happens here. This is all pretty straightforward now, okay? You're going to put a, you know, signature ID and we one, two, three, four, don't matter. Mobile, send you updates on the e-file status and transmit this thing, okay? I'm not going to do it. Nonetheless, I hope this was helpful for you. If it was, please hit that like, share, subscribe button. For the new tax year, I will do some live streaming help as well, and I'll make a new video for the 2022 tax returns. Um, my partner, Ebony, is going to be making an S-Corp help video on how to do that with TurboTax as well. So if you're interested in something like that, you know, make sure to stay tuned. Man, my hair got all messed up from me messing with it. Um, Thank you guys so much. Uh, again, hopefully this was helpful. Thank you.